Board of Education meeting um, is hereby called to order. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, we do have an extensive agenda, so I want to make sure that we start on time. And we'll start with the, uh, first off, happy school year. Happy new school year, everyone. Hard to believe it's September 23rd. We'll start with the act of reverence and um, pledge allegiance to the flag, and we'll have it led by our new student rep, uh, Sophie Gallery. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get into our um, student recognition, uh, actually I'm going to skip from the, the minutes, we'll go back to that in a second. Uh, so we'll uh, start with our student rec recognition, and I want to recognize um, our new student rep, um, Sophie Gallivan. Sophie um, is president of the Student Leadership Congress for the 2010-2011 uh, school year. Sophie Galligan started out her educational career in Armanac, New York, in Westchester County. She was in the third grade when her family moved to Rochester and so chose to send her to city schools. She attended Charles Carroll School Number 46 and Genesee Community Charter School before enrolling at School of the Arts as a drama major. In addition to appearing in numerous soda productions, she, also, she was also class president, um, captain of the modified swim team, and a member of the academic team. This year, Sophie is a pre-IB program at, at Wilson High School um, Commencement Academy, where she's also a member of the outdoor club and the swim team. Her younger brother, Finn, attends Wilson Foundation Academy where she is in the IB Middle Years program. Um, Sophie has been part of District Student Leadership Congress for the past two years and is currently SLC president, and she's looking forward to fulfilling her responsibilities as the student representative to the Board of Education and also to the members of SLC. Her goal uh, is to someday study medicine and communications. So um, she's a ninth grader. So let's give Sophie Gallivan a round of applause as our new student. So, so uh, Sophie, hopefully you'll keep us on our toes. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to say briefly. Um, um, feel free. Yeah, I would just, I think you said a lot of it, but I just kind of want to thank the people who are really important to me and who have supported me through achieving my, my academic goals and just goals in general. Um, first, I would like to thank Tom Petronio and the members of the Board of Education, and as well as Superintendent Pizarro and always the people who taught me from the start um, to value my education as if it were a privilege and not an entitlement. My mother and my father, um, I love you guys so much. And also my grandma Janie who supports me in everything I do. Thank you and I am looking forward to representing all of our students. Thank you. And um, now I'm gonna ask my colleagues to join me down on the floor um, uh, to, to, uh, for another recognition of um, one of the schools. Uh, tonight, uh, we want to recognize um, the world of inquiry school number 58 for their accomplishments in delivering programs and services that meets our needs of our students. And um, I believe Commissioner Elliott is the representative, is the, is the uh, liaison to, the, um, to school number 58. Um, World of Inquiry school number 58 has been named a national blue ribbon school by the U.S. Department of Education, Arne Duncan. Blue ribbon schools are models of improved student achievement from which others can take inspiration. Duncan said they are committed to the achievement and to ensuring that students learn and succeed. Their work reflects the conviction that every child has promise and must receive a quality education. Also, I also wanted to note um, School 19, which was recognized last year, 0910, 
for their accomplishments. Um, school 19 has been honored with the National Excellence in Education Award. The school was named one of 13 schools from across the country to win the 2010 National Excellence in Urban Education Award. It is, um, it is the second school to win the award in two years. Um, World of Inquiry also won the, school, uh, won the award in uh, 2009, presented by the National Center for Urban Transformation at San Diego State University, the prestigious award recognizes urban schools that meet numerous criteria, including proficiency rates on state assessments that exceed state, average, uh, state averages, high achievement for all demographic groups served, high attendance rates, low suspension rates for all demographic groups served, little or no achievement gap between demographic groups served, and attainment of NCLB adequate yearly um, progress. So if the principles of um, 58 and, um, and also representatives from 58 and 19 school are here. Please come, if you can just come forward and um, accept our congratulations on behalf of the board. Here is a mock of what the banners will look like. We don't have them here tonight, but. Um, <laughs> oh, we do. We do. We do have them. tell you why this is the reason why this is a big deal is because we haven't had a district named a blue ribbon school in a long long time the last time the district had a school that was named a blue ribbon school was when I was a student at school number 12 and it was named a blue ribbon school back in the um, late 80s so this is a big um, accomplishment for this district mr. superintendent I can add it's also a big deal if you take a look at New York State alone you have 700 school districts in New York State 10,000 schools in New York State, 50 is one of four. I won the award. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Webster. Um, thank you for, for, for coming here tonight. And thank you, Ms. Massetti Miller, who, okay, <laughs> who, who was the principal at the time. So congratulations to you all, and best of luck. Thank you. Okay, uh, before we move on with uh, the rest of the agenda, um, I want to skip back up to the acceptance of minutes from the August 26th business meeting, the September 2nd special meeting, and the September 2nd charter school hearing meeting. Um, members should have received these minutes in their uh, weekly packets, so I will entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes before you. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion around the minutes? Uh, just, uh, Mr. President, on the minutes dated August 26, I will, I don't know if you are voting on these all together, uh, but my decision will be to vote no on this one since I did not attend uh, that particular meeting. So for August 26, uh, my vote would be no. Okay. 
Um, all those in favor of um, all the minutes uh, from August 26th, September 2nd, and the September 2nd charter school hearing, please say aye. 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 Except August 22nd. Except, except August 26th. August 26th, yes. Um, any, any abstentions? All right, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, we will now move to um, speakers addressing an agenda item. We do have um, three speakers tonight, Inez Burns. Howard Eagle and um, Glenny Williams. Is um, Ms. Burns here? Ms. Burns? Okay. Um, Howard Eagle, is Howard Eagle here? Okay. Is Glenny Williams here? Was there? Oh, there he is. Was. Oh, here he is. Okay. Understanding is that uh, uh, it was an evening where we um, sort of hello, said hello to our new parent uh, representatives to the school board. And to that issue, I want to say amen. We need parents to be involved in our schools every minute, every day. It's crystally important that we do that. But you probably can hear there's a button in my voice. And here's the button. For the last 30 years, this school district, and that's all my life, have allowed the teachers to pick their representatives to the organizations that reflect this district, the administrators to pick their representatives to the organization that represents their interests in this district, the secretaries and janitors to pick their representatives to the discussion of decision making in this district. For some reason, this year, the district decided not to do that for parents. I am just simply appalled that in the land of America, we stand up here and say the governed should not be able to pick their representatives. Parents are the governed in this district. We represent the interest of our kids. And if teachers can pick their representatives, and they should be able to, then parents should be able to pick their representatives. <laughs> I don't care, and I'm 62, I'm not going to run again, so I'm not doing this because I'm trying to claim you didn't let me be on there. I'm doing this because we, the parents, are the stewards of our kids' education, and you should not take that away from us. I'm here with no teeth in my mouth and embarrassed as hell because I am embarrassed. I, I'm vain. I don't want to be here with no... I broke my plates because I can't see and I rolled over them. But I am here anyway because the governed should have a say on how they're being governed. And the way we do that is the parents elect their representatives. And school board, I said to you a month ago, actually four months was the first time, but last month's meeting, I asked you to weigh in and tell me should the superintendent be able to erase that practice of allowing the governed to pick their representatives. I have not heard your response yet, and I will be here every month until I hear the response from the school board whether they think the superintendent should be able to erase parents picking their representatives. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Did INS Burns or Howard Eagle uh, get here? Okay. And we will move off speakers, and we will move on to um, the superintendent's report. Mr. Superintendent. If we can also ask uh, that the board perhaps go back to the front again. And uh, Peter, do you want to go first? Well, 
Honorable Superintendent Broussard, President Evans, distinguished members of the school board, faculty, staff, parents, students. My name is Peter Carpino. I'm president of Your United Way, and I'm here this evening on behalf of the board of the United Way of Greater Rochester, and most importantly, on behalf of Colleen Wegman, president of Wegmans, who served as the 2010 or the 20, yes, the 2010 United Way campaign chair. It is my distinct honor and privilege this evening to present to you, Superintendent Brizard, and to have you accept on behalf of the entire district the second highest award that we give out in campaign, and that is called the President's Award. It was a little more than a year ago July of 2009, when representatives from the United Way sat down with district representatives and bargaining unit representatives. And one of the things that came out of that discussion, and I think it is a testament to the working relationship that you have here between administration and labor, that the agreement that was made was that no matter how the contractual negotiations were going to go, that both groups made a commitment that the United Way campaign would not be harmed and that they would cooperate and do the very best they can. I stand before you this evening to tell you just how well the district did. The Rochester City School District last year contributed the employees $365 thousand dollars representing a six percent increase in giving. What I think is remarkable, particularly during these economic times, is that of that total amount of money, sixty thousand dollars came from school district retirees, nearly a twelve percent increase. And of that total, Knowing the reductions that everyone was experiencing, the central office staff pledged over $48,000, an 8% increase. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you these are incredible, outstanding re results. This would not have happened were it not for what I consider to be an exemplary, exemplary relationship between organized labor and the district administration around the United Way campaign. Special thanks go to Tom Petronio, who served as the district's coordinator of the campaign, our retirees from the district, Jean Carlovati, Cheryl Govenda, D. Clements, Sue Heilman, who were instrumental in getting the returns from retirees, and the school district's bargaining unit leadership, beginning with Adam Urbanski, Margaret Sargent, Dan DiClemente and, and Margie Broomfield, and Vicki Go Govinia. That team to two together, working with district administrators, made these results possible. On behalf of a grateful com com community, Superintendent Brizard, I ask you and the school board members, President Evans, if you'd like to come forward, to please accept this president's award in appreciation for your generosity and support of our com community. Thank you very, very much. One final comment that I, I would make, and I think this is important for all of you in, in this room, and John claude is aware of this, as is um, Mar Margaret Mary Sar Sargent, both of whom serve on United Way's board. More than half of all of the dollars that are contributed to the annual United Way campaign go to support services for children helping ensure children's success in school is our number one priority. And when we look at school-age youth, ensuring that every child is ready by 21 for college, work, and life is a number one com community pri pri priority. I think this evening we have demonstrated that the district 
employees, the administrators, the staff, all have worked to together. That not only do they give to this community day in and day out with what they do with and for our children, but also through their generosity, they help make this the kind of community that it is. Again, thank you very, very much. Just quickly want to say thank you to, to staff as well, um, to our union leaders and to the board, and to Tom uh, for all the work uh, done to raise this, this amount of money. And as Peter said, it was, despite the economic times and even reduction in force, this was an increase from the year before. Um, so really we are grateful uh, for, for the fact that this, this community, this, this school district is very given, uh, knowing the money is going for, for, young, for young people. Um, I'm on the board of United Way, so uh, I was very happy to be on both sides listening to the kudos given um, uh, to the school district. Again, thank you for what you do, Peter, uh, for this community. Again, thank you to the, to the district staff. Um, I've, I've, I've been a beneficiary of the United Way program as a, as a youth um, coming up, being involved in numerous community organizations that receive United Way funding. Uh, so it's, and I'm also a member of the community investment panel for the United Way. So I, I know firsthand um, where these dollars go, and I'm glad, Peter, that we were able to be um, helpful. And I hope next year maybe we can even exceed uh, this past year's number. So thank you so much um, to the staff um, for, for, the, for their giving spirit. And, and, and Peter, thank you for your leadership at the United Way. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to sit. Yes, please. Thank you. So as the board is uh, sitting out, I too want to welcome Sophie to the board. Um, as a ninth grader, I think she's probably the youngest, if not one of the youngest uh, students we've ever had uh, on the school board. Normally we have seniors that spend a year and they go off the board. Uh, to have a ninth grader on the board um, really is going to be um, uh, a treat and interesting uh, year for us. You need to push us to make sure we do all, all the right things every single time. Um, so. Um, the second piece of our presentation really has to do with recognizing uh, the new parent council that we have. Uh, this was a dream and a vision for me almost three years ago um, in trying to get a group of, of parents. These are people who have children in our school district. Yes, many of our community members care and care very much about what happens to kids in this city, uh, but there are many ways for people to get involved. What I really was looking for were people who were perhaps the most invested because their most precious resource was in our schools uh, with our teachers and principals to sit at the table with us monthly and talk about issues, policy, practice, uh, vision, et cetera, to help us uh, drive, this, uh, drive this improvement that we're trying to make. So we have a, a, what we call like a take two uh, at, 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 this, at this piece. Um, and I'm glad to have many of the parents who are part of the council here tonight. And with that, I'm going to let uh, Dorothy be the one who actually do a presentation and introduce the parents who are here tonight. I'm not very technical. <laughs> Thank you, Superintendent Brazard. I'm Dorothy Evans, the District Coordinator for the Office of Parent Engagement. The Office of Parent Engagement uh, is doing exciting work on uh, initiatives for our parents, and we are doing this in collaboration with our parent leaders, our schools, and the Board of Education. One more? Great. Uh, at this time, I would like to acknowledge our 2010-2011 Parent and Bilingual Education Council members. They represent many of the district schools and serve on PTAs, PTAs school-based planning teams, and other school committees. Would our council members please stand so that we can recognize you? The membership guidelines were put in place to ensure that there are no conflicts of interest impeding the important work of the councils and that parents and guardians' voices are heard. 
Just yesterday, members of the Parent Council and the Office of Parent Engagement, along with Chief Pedraza Burgos, participated in the third annual State Summit for Parent Engagement in Education in Albany. Additionally, I would like to share that Governor Patterson has proclaimed October as Family Engagement in Children's Education Month in the Empire State. A copy of that proclamation is on display on our, at our reception table. We are thrilled to see that the Council's mission is in alignment with many of the proposed national standards for family school partnerships and that we brought before, that will be brought before the New York State Board of Regents for adoption. OPE and EPIC staff have been working hard to promote parent engagement on a district-wide level, and these are a few of their projects. First, I would like to ask my team to stand as they have been working hard to develop creative and relevant programming for our families. Okay, go back, Brian, please. Thank you. The parent engagement plus school equals student success RTS bus campaign includes 19 city routed buses and will continue through mid-October. They are in English and in Spanish. We also have a copy of those uh, buses on our display table. Board of Education and the Office of Parent Engagement are in the process of reviewing and updating the Parent Involvement Policy, 1900. To ensure there are meaningful and effective parent involvement activities and programs in our district that support student success. We also expect the Parent and Bilingual Education Councils to work closely with us on this update. As outlined in the district strategic plan, a school climate survey will be finalized and implemented this year so that we can establish benchmarks for improvement and recognize schools that are doing well. Many of you are aware of the Power Teacher Parent Connect web-based educational system implemented this fall for teachers' use. In preparation for the Parent Connect implementation, the Office of Parent Engagement will design and develop parent-friendly information and instructional materials to help parents make the transition from paper to technology. This resource is sure to have a positive impact on how our parents monitor their children's academic success. A parent university focus this year is college readiness for our parents. And we have two fall programs scheduled. MCC will host a uh, College 101 for district parents on October 23rd. And Geneseo Community College will host a campaign, excuse me, a campus informational tour for our parents on November 11th. And finally, the, well, this is not the last slide, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a listing of the services offered by the Office of Parent Engagement. If you would like more details or have questions on any of these services, you may visit us at our website or contact us by phone. And finally, uh, we are encouraging our district families to take advantage of the Parent Engagement Expo that is scheduled on October 2nd at the Wilson Foundation Academy. This experience is a sampling of what the Parent University has to offer this year. For more details and to register, again, please contact our office via email or by phone, 262-8359. Thank you. So Dottie, thank you. And um, Gladys, if you're here as well, if you want to raise your hand, thank you so much. Uh, for doing this, um, and it was the board. We go back. It's my report, Mr. President.
Thank you, um, Mr. Superintendent. Um, questions from my colleagues for um, the superintendent on his um, report or from rep representatives of the um, Office of Parental Engagement? Uh, President Evans? Yes. Uh, just, just one question. I saw the um, on the slide the um, component for um, college for parents. And um, how, what was the, the impetus of that? What was the rationale for doing that kind of programming for our parents? As, a, as parents have often told us that, um, especially those parents who are, uh, have not had the opportunity to go to college, is how do I um, engage in this process? Um, the college application process could be very complicated, and so um, filling out the FAFSA form uh, could also be very intimidating, and we have to do whatever it takes to help parents be able to engage in that process and help their, um, their child. So there's quite a few in terms of how to pick a college, um, and for parents, I guess the most important part about it is how to pay for a college, so there's uh, workshops on scholarships um, that are available to our students in addition to how to apply for those uh, scholarships as well. What the time frame is, applying to college often is driven by a lot of deadlines. Uh, and then if your child's in ninth grade, what should you be doing to prepare that child for college? If they're in 10th, it's different. If they're in 11th, then you're talking about um, making sure that they're taking the SAT. Um, and then if they're in 12th, about actually visiting colleges. So it's basically taking them through that whole process and assisting them with that. Oh, for the students, not for the parents themselves? It's, it's for the parents themselves. Oh, for the parents, okay. For the parents themselves, and it's both in English and in Spanish Is as this well. a new initiative, or has, has the district been doing this? We had, this is, this is bigger than what we've done in the past. A lot, of, a lot of the past work has been focusing on students as well, and not the parents. Yeah. And Mr. President, just one other thing I'd like to, um, to say with regard to um, the United Way campaign, I'd like to also um, congratulate the district on its um, its given and and in fact its increase in given and the reason that that's uh, so important to me because number one because I too as the president said uh, President Evans uh, was a product of a United Way funding agency and I believe with all um, my heart that if we're not for um, a United Way agency and helping me to develop the leadership skills that I have today that clearly I would not be here at this podium today. So that is what um, our dollars do um, in our community. And Rochester, uh, Mr. President and Mr. Superintendent, happens to be a great community that gives. And we're talking about a time when people are being downsized. Even in my agency, uh, where I work at, where people don't make a whole lot of money. Uh, increase their level of giving as well to the United Way. Uh, but of course, my executive directors strongly encourage us that we uh, give. But we have that kind of commitment, and, and I'm just thankful, Mr. President and um, Mr. Superintendent, that uh, everybody in this community is on board with uh, its contributions to the United Way. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Elliott. Um, Mr. Superintendent, if, if um, uh, you know, there, there was some, some comments by Mr. Williams earlier about the selection process of parent <coughs> council. If you could talk a little bit about um, how the parents were selected and how that process um, was rolled out this year for this council. So I'll start. You guys can please come up. Please come up. Um, one of the clarifications I want to make, perhaps in the comment made by Mr. Williams, was that this is not uh, necessarily a, a board a represented a parent group. This is a group of parents who've been looking to put together to work with the administration on looking at issues, um, certainly um, supported by the board, um, uh, but this was not um, a way, this is not the only way parents are represented in the district. This was, again, a group for us to work with uh, in looking at policy practice uh, and forming our strategy. Yes, and what we did is we canvassed all the school communities and asked that the school community make recommendations on who they would like to represent their community. We also posted information regarding the parent council uh, and requested um, <coughs> input 
from our parents through the Flower City Network. So we posted that some time ago. And we still have availabilities. If there are parents that are interested in serving on the parent council that meet the criteria, I would encourage them to contact me at my office, um, and I will work with them and their school community. Were, were any parents turned down to? Um... No parents were turned down. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Campos. I'm just curious if we're going to look to past um, parent council models as to how we as a body interact with the parent council so that we can make sure that there's some communication. I think it's just an overall question. Is it something that we need to be looking at um, as a body and working with you, Gladys? We're in the process of setting up dates, okay. so um, that's why we uh, had the just very brief and informal um, reception this to just be prior to the meeting, just to get you all to get to know each other. But we're in the process of securing dates for them to meet with the board and uh, and to meet with the superintendent. Yeah, and, and they are very much looking forward to that as well. Yes, and if I may, um, Commissioner Campos, we also have another structure called the Executive School Based Planning Team which includes parents, uh, a couple of parents, um, and uh, members of our bargaining units, and we talk about school-based planning issues and other uh, issues. Uh, this parent group, I think, can be a great vehicle in getting ideas on perhaps how the board can engage even either town hall meetings or small group meetings. Um, so the idea behind this as well is to have this group of parents inform our practice. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move on with um, board reports. Start with standing committee reports. Um, I have a very, just a very brief report, um, a couple of dates that are coming up. First off, I want to thank um, my colleagues who, ha who, who have so far attended the um, facilities modernization information sessions. Um, there was one last night, um, I, I saw Commissioner Elliott and Commissioner Powell at that one. And I know there was one um, the night uh, to Monday night, and I know Commissioner Elliott and Commissioner um, Williams were, were, were represented the board at um, that that session, and I believe that there are one. There's one more left. Two more left. Two more. And if, if, with the dates, Mr. Superintendent, if you can just say the date. One um, is Tom here next. Uh, Jerome next week. And the one the 28th of September is taking place at Wilson, Wilson Foundation, and then October 12th. To be determined. To be determined. To be right determined. now, we're possibly looking at uh, perhaps school number nine as a possible location for it. But we'll, okay. we'll, we'll announce it publicly as well. So I, I would like to in encourage um, um, uh, folks to attend those sessions. Um, they're, they're very informative and something that's very important um, to get information on how this modernization process is going to work and roll out um, over the next 10 years in this district. So, so uh, um, I'm sure there will be more to come on that. Mr. Superintendent. It's, it's one of the largest public works project, um, in, uh, I believe, in the history of the city. And Mr. Ken Bell, the chair of the Joint School Construction Board, is actually here in the audience um, um, today. Uh, we are anxious to get parent input um, in the process. If you cannot make one of the meetings, you can go online and, and submit questions and or suggestions. Uh, you can call the office. I don't have the numbers at the top of my head. But if you go on our website, rcsdk12.org, there are links there. Uh, that will give you the telephone numbers. If not, just call our offices, and we'll be glad to give you the number. Uh, my office number is 262-8378. I'm sure Selena will be happy to hear from you. Uh, we'll give you the email and the telephone number to call um, so that you can uh, give your input if you cannot make the meeting. So you can do it electronically, or you can come in person to do this. Um, but again, it's not the first, it's only one of two rounds. Once we have a draft master plan, we'll be coming back to the community um, in November and December to go through another uh, set of hearings again so folks can see what we are proposing. So please um, make it out to those events if you can. Also briefly, and I know Commissioner Campos would touch on this in her report, the um, second annual reach out, which is October 4th um, from 6.30 to um, 8.30 at um, East High School. Commissioner Campos can go into more detail on that in her report. Um, also, some t two more important things. Um, the Building Our Business Together, the board's office of NWBE development will house an outreach event for minority and women-owned businesses on Thursday, October 14th. The event will provide contractors with information on conducting business with the Rochester City School District, and more information is available on our website. Um, the Rochester City School Board has made it a commitment um, 
as you all know from our resolutions, will we mark whether or not they're MWBE, and I think almost every single member um, has echoed their, um, our, our commitment to making sure that there's equity in terms of providing opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses. So um, this event on October 14th, please spread the word to folks that are women or minority-owned businesses, letting them know that there is um, an event that will allow them to understand how the process works in terms of applying for, um, applying for bidding on um, some of the work that, that, that the district um, has. This is a large um, a business. Um, the district is, as many people know, almost a half a billion dollar organization. And we, uh, we feel as though it is necessary that m women and minorities are able to, um, to, to share in, 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 in the projects that come out of the district. So that event is designed to do that on October 14th. Um, and um, Ms. Lee, do we know what time that starts? So the, so the event is 6.30 to 8.30, and it's here at Central Office on October 14th. And then lastly, on December 2nd, this is um, far along, but I wanted to make sure we give people amp, ample notice. The Information Management Technology Department will host a technology expo at 5.30 p.m. at um, Thomas Jeffer Jefferson High School, and it's going to provide the board with a hands-on view of the technology that the district invests in um, on a regular basis. And this is important because we, we have approved, literally, millions upon millions upon millions of technology um, contracts, um, I know at least through my years on the board, and this gives us an opportunity to really see this. Having it at Jefferson will allow us to observe the district's use of technology in the classroom and use some of the state-of-the-art equipment software that is made available to students and engage with members of the IMA, IMAT team. I, I, always contend, I always tell people that the district's technology is ahead of um, many other municipalities around. Um, we really do have um, some, some top next technology that we've invested in over the last couple of years, and this will allow us to see where exactly all those resolutions that we approved, what it's doing. So mark your calendars for those dates, and um, we'll move on to um, our student. Let's start with our student rep report, and then we'll go right on down the line. Student rep, you have, do you have a report? I know it's the beginning of the school year, but. Um, just a small one. Okay. Um, yesterday we had our first student leadership congress meeting. It was successful. We had a large turnout, which I was happy about. Um, we discussed doing PSAs. Um, possibly the one we really are going to focus on for our first PSA is um, not skipping school or skipping class. And I don't want to tell you exactly what we're going to do with that. You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Commissioner Williams in the Audit Committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, the Audit Committee did not meet in since the last board meeting. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Campos in the uh, CIGR Committee. Yeah, we I'm met sorry, the uh, Board <laughs> Governance <laughs> Committee. We met on September 16th. We had a sizable agenda. We discussed the superintendent's evaluation, staff evaluation to board self-evaluation tool, and also the reach out event, outreach event that's coming up and also other ones that we're looking to plan. In regards to the superintendent's evaluation, we reviewed and it's being forward, forwarded with um, recommendation that the superintendent's evaluation tool for the performance during the 09-10 fiscal year and the evaluation tool addresses the superintendent's performance in the following areas. There's financial management, human resources management, organizational effectiveness, communication, and uh, community involvement, partnerships, and volunteers, and also <coughs> personal characteristics. And at this time, we received this in last Friday's packet. At this time, I'd like to request a motion to accept the superintendent's evaluation tool. There's been a motion on the floor to accept uh, it's been moved by Commissioner Campos, seconded by Commissioner Cruz. Um, and any further discussion on the tool which members received in their packet last Friday? It's essentially, it's the same tool that we used last year, except with updated goals that reflect, reflect the strategic plan. So we wanted to maintain consistency. When I, hey, one, one question, well, sure. question. When I looked at it, though, there are no metrics I mean how do we well there are no metrics I mean how do we it's um, the superintendent's going to be providing the um, narrative to give what it is that he's been doing and also the metrics with that so that we can use that towards the evaluation process 
So that'll be part of the evaluation tool we once should, we get that from John Claude. We should provide the metrics, not. No, he'll be provide the metrics, and then we assess and evaluate based on the metrics and the narrative. It's what we've been doing. I have a question. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, one second. Let me. Here's a problem. When I when I went through it, and some of the issues that I had, or problems I had, was say for example, goal number number three. Mm -hmm. We will recruit, develop, and retain highly effective, diverse people dedicated to, s to student success. Objective number one, develop and support highly effective school leaders. You know, my, my first question was, you know, what's an effective leader? I mean, how do we measure? We have three teachers in a room, or three principals in a room. <coughs> mm -hmm. What do we use to, to determine if Principal A is highly effective if B is effective and if Principal C is not effective. I mean, what? And that's our job is to assess those and to assess the staff so and assess John Claude's performance. So I understand what you're saying about metrics, and we came up with our um, plan that was adopted two months ago, last month, that has measurables in that plan. So. I would ask that you look back at the work plan, but also get that information from district staff or from the board staff. We Part of the evaluation, the evaluation isn't going to give you measurables in it. It's going to say effective, not effective, or agree, strongly disagree. And then, then they, you can add and say, I'm not happy because I feel or I understand that 20-some percent of the staff are qualified and that's it. I'm just making up an example. Yeah. But I, how, well, two things. If we don't have measurables in at the beginning, right. how do we know, I mean, how do you then determine at the end whether or not someone has met, met the uh, But this isn't the, the beginning, this is the end. R right. So, right. So, so what I'm saying is, if someone says, I'm going to develop highly effective teachers, okay, mm -hmm. what does that mean? I mean, what's an effective teacher? Right. Yeah, there has to be specificity with it, and we have not put any. So then I charge that to us, and then, then we're the ones that have to come up with that. That's not something necessarily that would be in this evaluation, though. That's not what the evaluation would do. But that's. I understand what you're saying, but that's, but that's not his goal. the. I mean, his, one of his goals is that he will so, develop and support a highly effective. Right, so if we have measurables, student. and then we can give those to, for John Claude to shoot for next year, but. At this point, there weren't measurables. Do you see what I'm saying? We're evaluating him based on what we've seen over the past year. He's going to provide a narrative of results, and that's what we assess him on. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if, Commissioner, if you take a look at the strategic plan, there are dashboards all over it. Um, in fact, right. I think what the Commissioner Campus is, is saying to you is that this is a tool uh, that will be used for the narrative that will be given to you by October 1 which will have the data, which will have uh, the benchmarks, which will have last year versus 0809 versus 0910. Um, same thing that was done last year, if you recall. This was the process we used uh, for the past couple of years. My contract calls for me to, to provide the board um, a, a draft tool for the board to either accept or, or modify. I believe last year when I proposed the tool, I believe it was Commissioner Elliott who made some recommendation for changes to the tool, mm -hmm. which was adopted. This is the exact same tool that was given last year. Um, if you remember last year, I also gave you, I believe it was a 30, 35 page uh, narrative, which was chock full of metrics and data uh, showing progress or lack thereof in certain areas. Um, and the board's, uh, um, 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 I guess, charge is to take a look at that and assess whether or not it's, 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 it's effective or not effective. In terms of getting very specific around um, goal number three, uh, we have a definition right now we look at 
teacher uh, effectiveness. That definition is changing, of course, this year, uh, given the fact that we are now allowed, starting next July, that is 2011, we're allowed now to use student achievement data to determine the effectiveness of teachers. So that definition um, is changed, and this goal was written in anticipation of this change. So the metrics I'll use this year to look at effective leaders and teachers may be different for us from what you get September 20, 2011. Um, so because that definition has just been changed by state, by state definition, by state law. But I will use the definition that was in place last year to give you those numbers and, those in, and to give you that information. Um, in some cases, it will be narrative, it will be qualitative, uh, because again, we have been using a qualitative definition of highly qualified or highly effective for decades in, in this district and in, in this, this country for that matter. But starting next year, uh, as you know, the laws just changed to take effect next July that will include um, a, a more robust quantitative and qualitative definition of highly effective uh, school leaders. But uh, I, what you see in front of you is a tool. It is not the evaluation, it is a tool. Uh, you will get a narrative uh, from me that you can go into executive session and discuss in detail. The same way has been done for the last two years. Well, I understand, but I, I use goal number three, go ahead, for Commissioner example, go ahead. As, a, as a, well, goal number three as an example. I could look at goal number one, we will ensure that each of our students is academically prepared to succeed in college life and work in the global economy, okay? How do you measure that? Commissioner, you don't measure, you measure the objectives. Take a look, it says here okay. um, a number of different areas. Um, focus on college and career readiness. Again, if you go back to the strategic plan, I urge you to go back to the document. There are dashboards all over it that describes exactly what this means and how we're gonna measure that over the next four to five years. So, so, so for me, Commissioner Williams, the measurables, uh, I take them from the strategic plan. So I will be, assessing you, Mr. Superintendent, on whether or not what's, what's, what's in that strategic, if, if, if the, whether or not the target is met or missed for me will be based upon what it calls for in, in, in that strategic plan. Um, in some cases, it may be a, a, a missed target. Um, you know, if we, say, if we say by this year what we wanted the graduation rate to be, and if it's not at that rate, that's, to, to me, that's, that, that, that's a missed target that we'll have to discuss um, when, when we get into um, executive session. President Evans. Um, Commissioner. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I'm um, sort of on the lines of uh, Commissioner Williams. And it, the, re the reason why I think it's important to be as specific as possible is so that there are no misunderstandings, that we have clear, <coughs> qualitative, or numerical um, points, measurements that we can um, uh, evaluate um, the superintendent. Secondly, I think that for the community, for the public, when they look at that tool, they can be clear about exactly what it is that the board is measuring the superintendent on so that uh, not only do we know that he has done a, an effective job or lack thereof, but the community is also clear about what it is that we're measuring. And so um, I think that, you know, the next iteration of this, perhaps it's gonna be approved tonight, but we need to look at how do we really, we gotta be, we, in my view, be as clear as possible about what it is that we are charging the superintendent on, and that needs to be in the tool. Now, remember, people are criticizing us because you know we paid the superintendent a lot of money. And so because of that, because of that, it's just real important that uh, the, the community sees what he's being paid to do. So. If I, if I may, Commissioner. Hold on one second. Uh, com sure. uh, Commissioner Campos and then. I agree that there should be me measurables. And I would offer up that this isn't the time to put those measurables in there. The time to do that is now for next year, for this from now until next, um, whenever we evaluate in November. So I agree that that should be a piece of it. It's the wrong time to do it. So if you're talking about measurables, let's get those for next year so that the superintendent has them. And also we could say, this is what we are measuring you on the next year so that he also has something to target. But to put it on here is completely a moot point at this point. If I may, Commissioner, um, they are um, deliverables in the document. I've never been accused of, uh, of not having data before. I've been called a data geek. Um, in, in fact, if you take a look at the document I gave to the board last year, of the 35 plus pages, at least 20 were just strictly numbers, strictly numbers. 
Um, again, never been accused of not having numbers, but uh, there are clear metrics, clear benchmarks, and I urge again for the board to go back to take a look at the strategic plan. You will find the dashboards, the numbers. We even have targets for every single school in every grade. Um, so all that was made available last year as well. Uh, so this is chock full of, of data um, uh, that can easily be compared. Some things, of course, um, do not have data attached. For, for instance, how do you measure parent engagement? First of all, how do you define that? Um, so some things, of course, are qualitative, uh, but the bulk of the work you'll see is quantitative. Right, so, so, any new, so I, I would urge members, if they have ideas on any targets for next year, we should be getting those now and formulating what we expect for the 10-11 school year, because now we're evaluating him on 09-10, which, which, which already happened. But I think also, Mr. President, in the interim, though, we need to, uh, I, I think we're, we, we understand that we need to be clear about this, but what do we do uh, in the interim in terms of uh, putting information on our website? You know, how do we direct our parents in the community to look critically at that tool? And that's what I think we can do between now and November to give them the supports that they need in order to look, as I said, critically um, at that tool. Um, you know, if he, the superintendent just said there are 35 pages, or he, he, he gave us 35 pages of numbers, you know, that's going to be a little bit too much right. for our, our community and parents to look at. But somehow, we need to be able to put whatever pieces that we're looking at, the strategic plan, all of that, with the tool so that the community is able to do an accurate assessment of the performance of our superintendent. And, and I think one of the, and that's one of the things I've been also an advocate of, and I think we can roll this out. We talked about doing the state of the district, and I think that that also can be a chance for the board to roll out um, exactly the things that, you, that you're saying, Commissioner Elliott, too, in a way that's, um, I don't want to say watered down, but in a way that's digestible for people to understand, and it won't be, Mr. Superintendent, 35 pages, but we'll, we, we could, um, shrink it a little bit to, to make it understandable so people know wh where we are, where we want to go, and whether or not that target was missed and what we're doing to get to that, to, to get to that target. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on the um, evaluation tool? Still a request for so once we vote on it, when is it going to be available on the website? Um, we, have to, we have to complete it first. Oh, it's not complete? We're not voting on it tonight? We're no. not voting on it. Oh, all right. No, we're, we're just voting, voting on, the tool. on the tool. The tool itself. We haven't, we haven't oh, done no, it. No, that's what I mean. Are we, is the tool going to be made available on the website? Yeah, yeah we can make it available. Um, yeah, the tool it's itself it's can be put it's on there. Yeah. yeah. A blank tool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the tool's fine. Um, might, mm -hmm. might I remind the board that when we adopted the board policy manual in 1999, we included exhibits that included all of the evaluation tools that were used, whether it was for a teacher, a principal, clerical staff, or the superintendent. They're all in there as exhibits. There's no reason that the minute we pass it, it doesn't, it can't go up on the web as, as an exhibit, exhibit to the superintendent's evaluation policy, so that it says so that what is with the policy is as current as. Right. Uh, along with the other exhibits. Okay. As long as right. all the other evaluation tools you throw right. this district. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Any abstentions? The ayes I'm going to vote no on the tool itself, though. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next, the staff evaluation tool and Did board self evaluation tool. We discussed this, and our goal is to have two tools to forward and recommend to the full board for consideration at the October business meeting. Uh, we've got our upcoming outreach event. The committee is going to be hosting the second annual reach out, which will be Monday, October 4th at East. As President Evans said, 6.30 to 8.30. And as we said, it's the purpose is to allow students, parents, and members of the community to easily access us, have one-on-one -on -one dialogues, but also different departments of the district so that um, we're easily accessible and customer friendly to all of the people and community stakeholders that we have. Uh, also, we had the New York State School Board's retreat on August 28th, and it, at the retreat we discussed different strategies to build more effective uh, relationships and also a more effective 
communications plan with students, parents, and community stakeholders. And we're looking forward to our next retreat, which is coming up, I think, in November. I don't have the date. And also others that will be scheduled throughout the year. Our next committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November 9th. Tuesday? It, it is on Tuesday because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Aha. Uh -huh. November 9th. Thanks for keeping me in mind. All right, Tuesday, November 9th at 4 p.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Powell and Finance Committee. Yes, thank you. First, I apologize for missing the reception for parents and the beginning of the meeting. I was at uh, open houses for three kids, at two different buildings, and that's the way it goes. Um, the Finance Committee report, uh, we met on Thursday, a week ago on the 16th, and we covered a great deal of ground, much of it very routine. That is to say, um, there were over a dozen um, contract renewals and another dozen that went through a new bidding, uh, the, the RFP process for the same kinds of, of commodities and other purchasing agreements that we have had year over year. Um, so there's a great deal of routine business that's part of this packet. There are some less than routine things. For instance, there's resolution 269 for an increase in transportation specifically to the Edison campus because the new schools are, are asking for an extended day, which means a a usual, the, the usual bus run at the usual um, <coughs> uh, end of day time around 2 o'clock for the schools that are being phased out and a later bus run for the new, um, the new schools. Um, that, that particular resolution is almost $400,000. It's a substantial request. Um, and um, we had substantial conversation around that during the Finance Committee, which we can repeat if we must here, but the bottom line was that that, that resolution is being forwarded from the Finance Committee with its um, recommendation for approval. Um, we, in addition to uh, the routine business, we have uh, Resolution 279, which is an FPFI. This is the document that allows us to get reimbursement from the state for the facilities um, um, work that is finalized uh, to date. So that's an important resolution. Um, so we also worked on um, the financial accountability policy, which we would name Policy 6000. Um, that new uh, policy would outline ways in which the board provides the internal controls and fiscal oversight. This is essentially declares all the things that we've been doing all along, um, that much of the work being covered in other uh, finance policies, but puts it all under one umbrella and says, this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. Um, the committee will continue to address other finance policy proposals, including one that uh, we need to develop in, to conform with the comptroller's audit. And um, we need to give some priority consideration to um, the uh, use of P cards uh, in particular. And that, that'll be part of our upcoming business, which uh, we will begin to discuss again October 21st. Uh, following the audit committee meeting. And I believe that concludes my report. I won't go into all the policy or the all the resolution numbers because it just starts people's heads spinning. Do we, do we, we don't have monthly financials. We, uh, we do have the monthly uh, financials. No, I'm sorry. I don't think we have them on the table, do we? Yes, they are. Right. Yes, they are. And we have student activity quarter uh, year end student activity reports. So yes, uh, thank you for reminding me and uh, I would put a motion on the table. First, for approval of the um, financial reports ending August 2010. So moved. It's been moved by, Commissioner, moved by Commissioner Powell, seconded by Commissioner Elliott. Any further discussion? Just one, one question. I, 
I missed the, the August meeting, and when I was going through my packet afterwards, I didn't see any, there are no financials there. Um, nor have I seen the financials for the end of the 2009-2010 fiscal year. Do Point of order. Those? The resolution is for the period ending August 2010. I'm sorry? The motion is... I understand. Uh, my question was... Your question's out of order. So, you, so you're saying he can ask... So you, uh, yeah, Commissioner, Commissioner Williams, uh, I'll get to your question after we're done with... Um, voting on this resolution and then, and then I'll go back to you and you can ask your question about the um, the, the um, end, end of the year in August August resolutions so anything else on the current um, yes I have one question yes uh, just just a quick question on the rentals piece which I under the uh, the original 429 budget uh, 4.2 million that included, does that include the leases that we have in all the, the buildings throughout the city? Ms. Martelli? Uh, Commissioner Williams said long and short of the answer is I'm not sure. I would assume that it does because it's all rentals, so it would be building leases, anything that we have as far as equipment and, and um, but I'll double check on that for you. Okay. And would you, what I'm, I'm looking for specifically is uh, how we're treating 690 St. Paul because in the past when we had students in there, we were eligible for reimbursement from the state. But I think as of last year, well, last year when all the students moved out, we are no longer no eligible. eligible for those right. for those reimbursements. Would you let me know just where I certainly will. whether or not they're in here, and if, if they aren't, it's where do we where do we make allowance for it? Where does it show up? As far as, as the leases? Well, not the lease, but the but the reimbursement itself. <laughs> the reimbursement would be in the revenue side of it, but I will I will check on that for you. But you'll not see the reimbursement in this number. It'll okay. be in the uh, as the revenue comes in. It's separate. Okay. We do not commingle them. All right. Okay. Yep. That's it. Thank you. Uh, all, all those in favor of the monthly financial report, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Commissioner Williams, you had a question about. The year end, if you can just re yes, I as I was saying, I I missed the the August meeting, and in my packet I did not see the the financials for July, which would have been the first month in the 2010-2011 fiscal year. Nor did I see, nor have I seen the year end numbers for 2009-2010, which should have been in the July. And refer your attention to policy 6630, where it says that the monthly reports, the monthly available funds report, and the monthly cash flow report beginning in September. So there is no, not by as a matter of policy a requirement for the district to provide monthly reports for the first um, two months of or the first month of the uh, fiscal year. And the only official year end numbers we have come with the CAFR, which um, we do have an unofficial uh, year end report that was provided back in July, but it is unofficial and would remain unofficial until the CAFR. So 6630, has that been adopted? 6630 has existed since December 2002. But we have, what is this? Well, the change in front of us does not include that line. That is not part of the change that's well, being Well, I understand, but did we spend money in August? Policy 6630 does not require All I'm saying is, have a report. did we spend money in August or July? I, I bet we did. And we aren't providing financials? Uh, Ms. Martelli. <laughs> And I know we discussed this before, um, Commissioner Williams, and you, um, go ahead. Yes, we did spend money in July and August. Okay. 
Are we entitled to financials? We have talked about this in the Finance Committee, and uh, according to the policy that was stated July and August, we do not, we provide June statements in July, and August, we do not provide July, but in September, which is what you have in front of you, you have July and August together. Just have to look at developing that policy. Right, exactly. Right. And, so, and again, just, and for the year end, I mean, what? The year end, in uh, July, you did receive the preliminary financials for the 09-10 year. They were marked preliminary before audit because we will not know what the, the actual numbers are until the CAFR is done because we, at the month of June we had to go back and do all the accruals for the year. So the information that you have on the June statement is on a cash basis and it's everything that we would have done normally throughout the year <coughs> minus the accruals for the uh, audit report. I, I don't no, when I'm, I'm looking at the June, what we've received in June now, and that was for May 31st. You did receive the June pack, or you did receive the June 30th, 2010 financials. We discussed them in the Finance Committee. They did go out. Madam Clerk, would you? Yeah, we did get those, Commissioner. Get a copy to me? Sure. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you. Motion to approve the uh, year end student activity report. All right, motion on the floor to approve the student activities funds reports, which you all received in your packet. Um, moved by Commissioner Powell, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Elliott. Uh, any, any discussion or questions on the student activities report? Hearing none, all, them, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Extensions, the ayes have it, thank you. Um, Commissioner Powell, your next meeting. Uh, I repeat, August 21st. After, no, that is, time is, um, not I'm, August. I beg your pardon, October. October. Um, the uh, start time is not absolute because we will be following the audit committee. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Elliott and the CIGR committee. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, but let me, let me just say, uh, Mr. President, that I've been earning my money this week. <laughs> and uh, as a point of personal privilege, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of those things. And let me just also give my personal shout out to School 58 for the work that they have been doing. But for me, I don't want us to just single out one or two schools. I want every one of our schools to be just as good as School 19 and School 58. And that is uh, the intent of this board to make sure that that uh, happens. So congratulations, School 58, as well as School 19. Uh, I um, visited the food service uh, department this week, uh, myself and uh, parent Felix Jacobs, and am encouraged by the um, what I'm seeing in that department. Um, although you know they don't put a lot of seasonings on the peas and carrots, you know, uh, and Leslie's trying to tell me why that's important. Uh, I do certainly understand that, and I've got to change my taste buds. But I'm I'm um, encouraged by the work that I'm seeing over there. And I just want to welcome, is it David Brown, uh, who's also been hired over there uh, to work. And so I'm very, very excited about that, Mr. Superintendent, of, of what we're seeing over there, really encouraged. Also had a meeting with the folk in the transportation uh, department. Um, Commissioner uh, Cruz and I uh, met with uh, Marie Dupree and Wayne Kittleberger and Jerome Underwood regarding um, the policy that uh, we're uh, that was an issue for us that eligibility policy so we're trying to look at that in its totality and how um, we can come up with a resolution that's going to work for everybody. Um, I also as um, President Evans said attended the uh, two of the hearings for the school construction and as you probably saw in the editorial today, uh, uh, Commissioner Williams and I are really focusing in on making sure that we can get um, African Americans in particular, and I want to be clear about that, in particular because disproportionately African Americans have not been in the process. Even when you talk about affirmative action, we all know that it's white women who benefit more from affirmative action than what the original intent was. So I'm being very specific about the group that I think that we should, that, that, I'm, that I'm advocating uh, to be in a part of that, particularly because of the work that I do 
on Joseph Avenue and what I see on Joseph Avenue. And so, um, and my philosophy has been, and, and history proves me out, that if you put the African American agenda first, everybody benefits. When you put everybody first, African Americans are marginalized. So for me, it's about putting the African American agenda first with regard to this. Um, also, um, I'd like to say, uh, Mr. Superintendent, that um, I uh, convened a meeting, as you know, uh, with the fire department today with regard to uh, some concerns that were reported in one of the newspapers here in our community. And um, although, and, and let me just um, thank uh, the principal from East High School, um, De, De Jure, uh Matthews, um, the CTE person for attending, um, we had uh, commissioner, we had com uh, city councilwoman, uh, lovely um, Loretta Scott there, President Lovely Warren was there, Assemblyman David Gant was there, the fire chief was there, president of the firefighters union was there, and his colleagues, uh, other staff members who was also in the room, including Deputy Chief uh, Teresa Everett, to talk about this program and to try to come to some resolution uh, with uh, if being fixed. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, the community is, um, um, do, do not want to lose this program in any kind of way. It looks as if it's going to be expanded under the whole auspices of public safety, so we're very, very excited about that. Um, and also, I forgot to mention Dr. Andrew Turner, who is from the mayor's staff, who's a part of this as well. Um, and we're going to move forward on how we really pull, put this thing together. Because again, it's important that we give our young people opportunities. Everybody is not going to go to college. And so if we can give our young people some you know, viable alternatives, firefighting is a great um, career. Um, and even if they're you know, you know, four or five, at least we've given um, our young people the opportunity to explore this area. And so I was glad to uh, convene that meeting at City Hall. I'm looking forward for um, further negotiations in the future so that we can come with a solid uh, program. So um, saying that, I wanted to, that's all my work that I've been doing uh, this week. But uh, Mr. President, the Community and Intergovernmental Relations Committee met on uh, Wednesday, September 15th to discuss this whole notion around truancy and the police department. And um, what does that mean for um, the students in our community, you know, is that an introduction to them to the um, to the you know to the jail system? So we're looking at uh, that whole issue around that um, because we already know that there's tension between the police department and um, particularly in the African American community. And so we want to look at how we can reduce that. Maybe there are some alternatives to the police department um, picking up our children. Um, we're still trying. We're still looking on, um, working through that and, and figuring that out. So that's that's the issue that we are, are working on. And I'd like to thank. Um, uh, you got to tell me your name because I forgot your name. I have to thank Lori Baldwin and um, Christine Richards, I believe, for providing the information for us for that. So we're still um, pursuing that particular um, issue. Also, uh, Mr. President, we uh, developed a, uh, an agenda, a legislative agenda, 2010 proposed legislative agenda. And um, I'd like to, uh, and if I'm out of line, please let me know, um, pass this on for your consideration, for the board's consideration for um, approval. There's a motion on the floor to um, approve the legislative agenda, which members should have received in their packet. Is there a second? Second. Any um, discussion on the legislative agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor of the legislative agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The legislative agenda is um, passed, and we'll have it up on our, on our uh, website. And uh, Mr. President, the next meeting of the Community and Intergovernmental Relations Committee is scheduled to meet on Wednesday, October 20th. And that concludes my report. Thank you, um, Commissioner Elliott. Commissioner Cruz and the um, Policy Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of things before I get into my report. Um, it was a, a good meeting at the Transportation Department. You begin to realize the complexity and the kinds of challenges this district has 
in transporting on a daily basis safely some 27,000 uh, children. If you think about that, 27,000 children are going to and from school, and you hear so very rarely any issues, anybody getting hurt, and it's just phenomenal. And, and the staff there um, are, you can just tell there's so much, there's such a great level of commitment to do the kind of work that they're doing, and always looking for other possibilities of how they can do the job better. And uh, I, I, I walked away with a great uh, appreciation for that work and for Jerome Underwood and his team up there. It is not an easy uh, uh, project, it's not an easy service that we provide, uh, yet we do it flawlessly every day. So I just wanted my kudos off to your staff, Superintendent, Thank you. Uh, especially your transportation staff, uh, doing a great job and always looking for something, another way of doing the job. And uh, Commissioner Elliott and I are, are, are trying to help that process, so hopefully we'll have something that comes before the board that um, we can all work on. And just, just one other thing I'd point out, Mr. Superintendent, and I believe they get it that it's about students first. Absolutely. I, I felt that within um, the department, and I'm, I'm really, really um, appreciative of that. And Commissioner, if I may, just with Maria, um, when the snows begin to hit, she's walking the streets at 3 a.m., mm -hmm. to making sure the bus is okay before we can decide schools are open or close, so they do all your men's job there. Thank yeah, you. you can definitely see there's a, a tremendous level of commitment. Uh, in addition, you know, some of us were also working too, Commissioner Elliott, uh, during the week. <laughs> uh, we had a great meeting on Tuesday evening at uh, uh, one of the Iberian American Action League facilities with Latino parents and Latino students. Uh, superintendent was not shy about his, uh, his uh, appreciation for the rice and beans. Uh, yes. I should have been at that one. Way ahead. <laughs> But it was, an, uh, it was a good evening. We had an opportunity to talk to some folks uh, who, who normally don't get an opportunity to address, uh, don't come here certainly, and, and don't have an opportunity to, to talk to the superintendent. <laughs> I thought it was some interesting dialogue, some issues that were presented, and uh, I do appreciate that you took time from your schedule to be a part of that, uh, that, that process last night. Commissioner uh, Campos and I were the ones that um, uh, sort of semi-hosted it, so with, along with the Bureau American Action League. So but thank you, superintendent, for that. Um, as I launch into my uh, policy uh, committee report, we met on uh, Thursday, September the 16th. Uh, we are churning out policies like crazy. We're modifying, we're changing, we're getting rid of some things. Uh, uh, poor Deborah Flanagan, who has done a phenomenal job of trying to keep this together and try and keep me together to try and figure it all out at times because it does get rather confusing. And then Chuck Johnson has just been a phenomenal part of, of this process. But I, I think we're going to get through a tremendous part of the policy manual. Uh, as you can see tonight, we've got some, some uh, uh, resolutions that we'd like to put forth. Uh, we're, the first part of it is our first priority is to look at all the legally mandated um, uh, policies and two, uh, one, uh, with regard to safety, uh, safety program, and this is reviews that focuses on the policies, environmental concerns, potential threats to safety, including a staff training and provision of transfer students when attending a school designated as persistently dangerous, uh, or when a student has been a victim of violent uh, uh, offense at their school, and it sort of begins to lay out uh, what, uh, what the protocols for that are. And also, the, uh, legal, one of the legally mandated policies have to do with safe schools, and this is a, a, a revision of the proposed policy to focus specifically on student safety and violence and the development of a district-wide school-level safety plan and monitor, monitoring that plan uh, by teams at each level. The following policies are uh, revised in collaboration with the Office of Safety, uh, those, those were revised in the, uh, with the Office of Safety, Security, and Director of Operations and have been vetted by the Law Department. And they will be introduced in October meeting as informational items. Uh, we're also looking at revised regulations regarding the use of district cell phones, creating clear lines of responsibility for monitoring use and taking disciplinary actions in the event of misuse. We're looking also, we had an opportunity to talk with staff regarding the parent involvement policy that we have currently. We're going to be looking at some uh, potential revisions to that, some uh, better clarifications of roles, some clarification of procedures and, and, and those kinds of things. I think it's going to be an interesting next couple months as the staff is now readying a, a uh, proposed uh, uh, policy revision to that. And I think it, this has been a request from several commissioners uh, for us to take a look at that so we were finally able to do that. We're uh, looking at the proposal for a new financial accounting policy, revisions to the proposed purchasing policy, uh, 
Uh, and for the following items, uh, for informational uh, uh, items for this evening, uh, you'll have in your practice the financial accountability pol policy. <coughs> it's a policy that describes the ways in which the board exerts fi uh, fiscal difficult uh, oversight over the district through code of ethics, audit committee, internal audit, claims audit functions, and those kinds of things, both uh, the finance and policy committees um, um, have had their say on this and have been vetted by the law department. And we propose we uh, bring this to you as an informational item. Uh, also, kudos to Commissioner Powell, who we work in tandem, it seems, in a bunch of these proposals. And so it's been good working with the Finance Committee as well. For discussion items tonight, we're pr uh, proposing the budget policy. It's policy revision requires a superintendent to describe efforts made to solicit input from parents, uh, it's, uh, students, staff, and community members um, as, as part of the budget proposal process. And we have a uh, budget adoption policy that allows us to uh, adopt it. it. Right now it says we have to do it through a special meeting. It will give us some flexibility so it doesn't require a special meeting. And we can do it uh, 10 days bef uh, up, up to 10 days before the, the deadline for submission to, to uh, city, uh, city of Rochester. Uh, another, uh, this is a more technical kind of change and modification on our investments policy. We were under an investment policy that was based on uh, when used for the suburban districts um, where they have the ability to raise taxes and also to uh, be able to control how they invest that money. As you know, we are under the, uh, the auspices of the city of Rochester and they control our, our, the income coming in from there. We, we have no control over taxes and they control um, the investments. So the policy uh, changes that to say that uh, basically, the city of Rochester is in control and recognizes them. Um, let's see. If there is any issues, please let us know with regard to these discussion items and the informational items. Please let um, myself know or uh, Ms. Flanagan if you have any concerns. Lastly, we have resolutions to adopt tonight. Uh, there are two financial reporting uh, resolutions. This is a, a simple uh, revision that reflects current practice in terms of the board receiving quarterly uh, student activity reports and quarterly change order reports. Uh, so it's just a small te technical modification. Uh, again, our goal in both finance and policy is to look at those things we can do to increase and enhance our oversight uh, uh, and, and meeting our fiscal responsibilities. And uh, purchasing is another resolution we are presenting for. I will ask for a motion on both of these in a second, but purchasing is revised policy changes the dollar thresholds for competitive bidding for procurement and public works to comply with recent changes in the law. And basically we've changed it so that we can continue to stay current with the law uh, and more importantly to a comment that was made, uh, additional proposed revisions reaffirmed the board's commitment to contracting with minority and women owned businesses and firms and prohibiting discrimination among contractors with the district. So for the first one, the financial reporting resolutions, um, I would like to um, propose a motion that we accept that. That would be resolution 280 and 281. Do you want to wait till we get there or do you want to? Is it already in the packet? We're going to vote on that when we get to the resolution. Do you want to, uh, you want to, okay. You want to go there, okay. Uh, so that, on that basis, uh, we, um, uh, our next policy committee meeting is on October 21st at 5.30. Thank you, Commissioner Cruz, and you guys have been Busy, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, that concludes our report. Did Inez Burns or Howard Eagle get here? Mr. Eagle. After our last speaker, we'll, move, we'll then move to resolution. Good evening. Good evening. I apologize for my I apologize for my lateness. Maybe I don't need that. Um, He's a recorded Howard. That. It needs to be recorded so you can speak. It. Oh, okay. Just hold on to it. Just hold on to it if okay. you can. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay. I apologize for my lateness. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, address you. I'm speaking as a parent of uh, two children in the Rochester City School District. And I want to speak to the um, issue of the uh, parent group that's being uh, showcased here tonight, the new, I guess, District Parent Council, 
And I don't want to be misunderstood. This is not uh, any, uh, there are no antagonistic feelings toward the parents who are uh, vol volunteering to serve, uh, no conflict. We want to work with parents. However, there is a problem. I'm not sure who the, I have questions. I'm not sure if they go to the board, to the superintendent, to Ms. Pedraza, to Ms. Flaherty. I'm not certain, but uh, I do I want to know what the heck is going on. I want to know what happened to the process that started in this community in April 2008 when we had uh, meetings all over this community uh, with community groups. I remember the big meeting up at um, Colgate Divinity School, broad-based community meeting, meetings at schools at Wilson, at East, and we started a process to develop a parent and community uh, organization, and that led to a nomination, a formal nomination process, which uh, started on uh, November 24, 2008, and it, that led to district-wide elections, which started after the Meet the Candidates night, which was on January 8, uh, 2009, the last day to vote, and people voted in schools across this district. The last day to vote was February 9, 2009. Uh, Council members were announced on February 13, 2009, and we were to, those of us who were elected, were to serve two-year terms. Um, and so if my math is correct, we would have been serving until at least February 2011. The first meeting took place right here in this very room. The superintendent addressed the newly elected council, and I remember him talking about uh, needing, I don't know if his word was demand or command parents, but his point was we need parents who will push the district to be accountable. I remember him saying, like in the suburbs, we need parents who are really going to demand accountability. And everybody seemed hopeful about this group that it really was going to do some good work. Um, and then we didn't hear anything over the summer, this past summer. We didn't hear anything until today, until today, this afternoon, when we saw um, I mean, we met up until the point at which meetings just stopped. They stopped over the summer, at least for some of us. Uh, and then we saw Mr. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. We saw Mr. Um, Petronio's press release this afternoon announcing that a new group had been formed with a list of names, some of uh, which we had never seen before, don't know who they are, others who were elected along with us and are still serving. And um, um, the, according to the press release, they represent all parents. That's a quote. It's in the press release. And nobody could represent me. I don't think you could represent people in general without their permission, without even talking to them. So I'm, I'm upset about that, uh, and I don't think this is going to work. It's not democratic. I think there's a need to go back to the drawing board. It's going to be problematic. And so my questions are not rhetorical, and I'm not sure who they should be addressed to. Ms. Uh, Pedraza, Ms. Flaherty. The board, the superintendent, I don't know, maybe President Evans could tell me. Uh, but also, I'm, I, I heard the question, were any parents turned down in the current process? And the answer came back, no. Well, maybe some, no one was turned down, but some of us were clearly turned out. In fact, I should have known when I saw the statement from Ms. Pedraza in the media, uh, some reporter called me about it, saying that I was no longer qualified to serve on the district parent council. I, should, I guess I should have known then. That was a while ago. Uh, okay, Mr. Their statement also was about Glennie Williams. But anyways, well, it's, it's good to hear Ms. Flaherty say that there are still opportunities right. to volunteer. That's good, because five of us in the room right now want to volunteer. Mr. Ricardo Adams, Ms. Mary Adams, Mr. Wallace Smith, Mr. Glenn Williams, and myself. I wanted to be public record that we volunteer to serve. That okay. doesn't necessarily end the problem about process, about democratic process, which this district says it values and which we teach our children to value. Certainly as a so, social studies teacher, I taught children and still teach children to value that. So, so Mr. Eagle, I'm sorry, I'm going to... I don't know who should answer So, Mr. Eagle, I, I would recommend that you speak to Ms. Pedraza and Ms. Flaherty right after, well, you can speak now, I guess. We're going to go move into resolutions, but to get clarification around, around um, the, the, the council, how it was selected, and any, any, any other um, particulars. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move on. Did, um, did Inez Burns get here? Inez Burns? Okay. We will now move on to... Mr. President, uh, yes, this uh, point of order, we didn't of, hear the, um, 
I know Commissioner White is not here, but we didn't hear that report. Is somebody going to report? Yeah, I was looking for it, um, his report. I, I, that's why I was I was up looking through the through his uh, packet to see if I could find yeah. his report. I could not find it. So, um, well, let, let me just say if I it, it, if it's you tell me if I'm in order or not. I wanted to comment. I serve on that committee, and I wanted to comment. Well, if you could, if you could comment on what happened at the meeting, that would be great. <laughs> we uh, yes, I can. Okay, we, 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 we went over. You can do the report. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't you can know remember it all, from, yeah, Let me let me just cool. say that the uh, deputy superintendent for instruction presented us with a. Um, um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Elliott. And this is the Excellence in Student Achievement Committee um, that Commissioner Elliott is speaking to. Um, Commissioner White is not here, so she's going to give us a recap of that. Yeah, and it's, it, I just, because it's important that we um, talk about this, particularly in line of the new cut scores that the um, Education Department has, has uh, announced. Um, she, um, it was presented to us the um, performance, the ELA and math performance for grades three through eight. Uh, and the reason that I wanted to bring it up and to have a conversation with you, Mr. Superintendent, about it is because I said to the deputy superintendent, this year is going to be tough. This year is going to be rough. Now, if we just sort of made it where we increased our reading and math scores, and, and uh, I think that uh, um, the chief of accountability was also there presenting, that um, <laughs> if the cut score has increased, it's going to be difficult for us, very challenging this year, to get to the levels that we were uh, last year. And so um, I, I see a lot of frustration that's going to, I, I foresee that. You know, I, I don't know if that means people are going, may leave the district because of the new um, cut scores that, that have been, um, that have been uh, instituted. So I, I'm, a, I'm a little, uh, I'm, I'm, for lack of a better word, I, I'm somewhat leery. And, and Mr. Superintendent, I, I, you're gonna have a job ahead of you. That's all I got to say. Um, you, I look at, for example, 58 school that, that had, I believe it was, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeanette, that had a 92% or 96% um, passing of ELA with the new cut score, I think that went down to 46 percent. That's drastic. So <laughs> that's real drastic. And that's 58 school that we just talked about. So you got your work cut out for you. And, and um, I don't, I, and if you could comment on that, Mr. Super, if this is the forum to do that, if not, I can do it offline. It's just going to be extremely difficult in my mind over the next year, the next two years, to really do the kind of work that we want to do. I mean, people are going to really have to work. <laughs> you know, people are really, as I say, they have been working. But people are really going to have to do some work. And I uh, hope that the district and the infrastructure in, in the district supports the kind of work that the Commission of Education wants uh, to have happen in, in, uh, in the state. And of course, uh, President Obama, particularly since we got the race to the top dollars, wants to have occur. I just. Um, I don't know. I'm. 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 I, it's going to be difficult. I just see that. I don't know if you want to comment on that, or you don't have to. You don't want to. But I. I. I think if 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 Beth remembers, that's all I was saying. I mean, I just you know I was babbling about that because I just see this as being a really serious situation. So. Anything on the, on the cut scores that they talked about in ESA? I didn't attend the meeting, but I know that cut scores have been a regular topic. Of course, of course it has. That's why I make all this money, Commissioner. <laughs> um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a valid point uh, because if you see perhaps some of the letters I sent to staff uh, over the summer and to parents, um, it really was done to maintain um, a level of esteem in, in the work because um, reading and talking to colleagues across the state, um, even in the more affluent suburbs in New York State, uh, many of school, many, many, many schools were devastated by, by what took place. Um, we publicly support the commissioner uh, in raising standards, and we still do. Uh, we applaud the work. What we did not agree with, and I was very clear with Dr. Steiner about this, 
was that we didn't like the way this was implemented, the policy implementation, to do it after the school year was over. Uh, we felt it was as if changing the game, the rules of the game after the game is over. Um, but that said, we support um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the raise, uh, rise in, 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 um, in standards. Our schools will, 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 will meet the challenge. I, I'm not going to promise to you we're going to be back at 96% in one year. Uh, it will take us uh, a few years to go back. But if you look at the reform efforts we have in place, uh, it is meant to push kids to be college ready. Um, you know, graduating students from high school uh, is not enough because many of our kids who went to colleges are not succeeding. I'll give you one data point, Commissioner, you've heard me talk about. Uh, in New York State, if you take a look at black Latino males who go on to college, again, 40% of them graduate in four years in this state. Of the ones who go to college, only 13, one three, 13 percent come back year two in colleges across the state. That is, is a very scary proposition for, for us as, as a state and for us as a country, which is why we support the, 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 the rise in standard. Our schools will meet the challenge. The same way if we look at the graduation rate, it dipped when they increase the standard, we're going to go right back again and, and meet it. I really believe in, 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 in our principals. I really believe in our teachers and, and the capacity of this district um, to rise to the standard. Again, it'll take us a little time to go back. Uh, but the fact is, though, uh, the one thing I want to make clear, if, if although they changed the definition of passing, our students have been doing better for three years in a row. Uh, if you look at the scale, the, the, the scale scores, meaning that uh, again, the way I explain it very simply is that if you scored a 68 on the test and 65 of passing, you pass. Is it 68 a great score? No, but you passed. If this year you get a 72, but someone says now that passing is 75, you technically failed. But you still improve from the year before. So our kids are improving. We need to accelerate that. It is not something we've shied away from. We've been talking about the need to do this. Yes, the work is monumental, um, and but we have the faith um, in, in our leaders and our staff to actually make this happen. Um, it is going to be difficult, but we can do it. And Commissioner um, Elliott, if you can just continue with the rest of the. Um Yes, uh, President Evans. Um, also, we had a presentation on the. Um, uh, this new website, uh, let me just, just had it here, excuse me. Um, um, the website, how, how to use uh, the data that, and reports on, um, on our website um, through the frequently accessed district links is the uh, presentation that we, um, that we were shown um, at this meeting. We met on September 14th. Um, and then uh, the um, following items have been requested to be on the agenda for next month. It is the Teaching American History Professional Development Grant, an update on the African American Development Department, uh, the SHOT report, and the next meeting of the Excellent and Student Achievement Committee will be on October 19th, and that will start, it is a new time. It used to start at 5.30. It will now start at 6 p.m. Uh, and Mr. President, that concludes the report of the Excellence and Student Achievement Committee. Thank you, um, Commissioner Elliott. Um, we'll now move on to resolutions, but before we do that, I will entertain a motion to um, extend um, past our so time. moved. Moved by Commissioner Elliott. Is there a second? I mean, second? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. We will go past our 8:30 deadline, and we will start with um, human resources resolutions. Um, our student rep, she's still here. Yes. Our student rep mm -hmm. doesn't cast an advisory vote on on um, human resource human capital initiative resolutions, but she will on the rest of them. So I'll entertain a motion on resolutions 197 through 225, which are. Um, human resources resolutions and any conversations around these need to be um, related, not related to any particular individual, would have to, but need to be general in nature. So I entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Powell. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Campos. Um, any questions on resolutions 197 through 225? President Evans. Yes. Just Commissioner one question Evans. in the language. Um, uh, rescind retirements. What are some of the reasons for rescinding the retirements as granted, as the language says in some of the resolutions? Um, Mr. Superintendent, you're going to have your, is that Ms. Warren? Ms. Warren? Hello, Jamie Warren, HCI Director. 
Milan Brown, HCI director. Could you tell us the number of the resolution that you're referring to? It's, it, it's in there throughout. Okay. The, 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 the language is uh, to rescind retirements as granted. Um, one to of those. 10, to 10 to 11 to 13. I just want to understand the language. Yeah, the reasons oh, why we would some rescind. Some of our, our retirees had a 14 day window to rescind their retirement and to indicate whether they wanted to continue with it. So it's two people elected to rescind it. Okay, so those reasons are not public. I mean, what do they, why they just decide that? They, they had, I think they had retired. The board approved their retirement. They changed their mind. Yeah, then, but what does that do for our processes? Our HR process. It means I that mean, we don't have to seek to fill their positions elsewhere. That they would return. It, it wasn't. If their positions were eliminated. Okay. Right. Their Thank positions you. weren't eliminated. So. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, anyone have anything else on 197 through 225? Yes, I do. Commissioner Williams. On 200 and 202. Just want to get an understanding of what's. Um, specifically, uh, let's take 200 first. Okay. Um, this was an error. He was granted tenure in the incorrect area. So we had to rescind it and change it to the correct area. And then 202, this person resigned. But and we received their letter late. So, but this was a resignation instead of a permanent appointment. We grant, well, here is, maybe the general counsel could, could <coughs> weigh in on this. At 200, for example, we granted tenure in social studies and it vested on September 1st, okay? And now we're changing it from one tenure area to another. The first question becomes, if we do this, does he then have tenure in two areas? No, my, my guess is maybe a clerical error from yeah. social studies, social worker, somebody probably okay. mistyped. I, I understand. Yeah. But I understand the error, but legally I don't think we can do that. I mean, once he's granted tenure in that area and the tenure is vested. No. He would have had to have served the probationary period as well, and he did not serve. It was an error. And a person, a person cannot get tenure in an area they're not licensed to yeah, be in. So even if the board it. made the approval, they can't go against state law. But we, no, no. We, we granted granted tenure. We, but, we, but Commissioner, but even if you did through resolution, the New York City Education Department still can override that. The person does not have a license in the area. They cannot, even if there is a resolution, they cannot get tenure. No, they, they can't. Well. But, you know, the error is on our part. Say, for example, mm -hmm. if by chance, and we do it every month, we include a list of people who should be granted tenure. Yes. Okay? And say out of that list, um, there's a person in there who should not have granted, been granted tenure. Mm -hmm. And we do it. Let's say in this case, we granted tenure um, on August 26th for deferred date, well, and it would vest on September 1st. September 1st comes around, that person is now granted tenure. We later find out, as in this case, that it was done in error. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying that we can do that? Commissioner, the resolution from the board is one part of the process of someone getting tenure. It's not the only process. No, no I, I understand. Yeah, the, the, the part that what happens is, mm -hmm. and you, know, you could look at the case law, mm -hmm. once this thing vests, that's it, even if there's an error. I guess, Commissioner, what I'm saying basically is that to get tenure in a tenure area in New York State, the board resolution is not the only criteria. It is one of several criteria that must be met. So because a resolution is passed does not give the person tenure automatically unless they have been teaching in or working in that area. They've gone through a probationary period. Uh, education law is clear on that. I mean, no, no. We're happy to yeah. provide you language regarding it, sir. Yes. No, we well, search it for you and provide you the language regarding it. Yes, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and also I want you to look at to cite two cases where this thing came up. One was Remus versus the Tonawanda School Board, and the other one was Schaefer versus the Schenectady Central School District. Same issue here, where in those cases, the boards made a mistake. Tenure was granted, the tenure vested, 
And then the board then tried to say, you know, we made a mistake, we can't do it, and the appellate courts or the Court of Appeals said, this person didn't grant it tenure. You can't rescind it. So we'll have legal look into it, commission. Okay. Same way, for instance, we can't say if the board appoints someone as a principal of a school and the principal is not licensed in New York State to be a principal of a school, that person cannot be the principal of a school. Right, but, but tenure is different. Tenure is a permanent, the permanent award. But if the license area is incorrect, no. if the person is not a social worker and okay. is a, and a well, teacher instead. Check on it for me. We'll, 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 we'll check. Do. We'll check. But this but, person is still going to maintain their tenure. Exactly. You're just getting it in the right area. Exactly. Yeah, but you can't. Well. So are okay. you say, so are you saying that this person would 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 protest them getting tenure in right in their right area well, no, instead of social studies? What we're doing here is we are rescinding the tenure in social studies and switching it to to a social work. Which is where they work. Yeah. But, but they work in social work. But I'm saying legally you can't do that. So what's the solution to, for uh, what's well, the solution for well, making that's them? That's what I'm saying. You know, this person, in essence, now has, well, the first solution is to make sure we don't make those kinds of mistakes again. The other solution is, is something the board has to work out, or, or the, the district has to work out with this particular individual. There's no issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, there is an issue. Anyway, in 202, what happened here? The person sent in their resignation letter after the board. So it was a late submission of their resignation. Okay, and then when did the, when did the resignation come in? I can't go into detail, but the, it came late to me. Was it after? It was after. Oh, after what? The after, deadline. after the deadline of this information, oh. which happens frequently. I understand. Was it after August 26th? Yes. Was it before or after September 4th? It was within the last two weeks. But had the tenure vested? It's an appointment, not tenure. I'm not, sorry? It's not tenure, Commissioner. It's an appointment. The person was given a job, a passed the board resolution, the person didn't resign. No. <coughs> if, you look on, if you look on the, uh, he says he, the packet in August, if you look on the packet in August, this person was up for tenure. I, I don't know if it says right. here, even if they're tenured, Commissioner, they can still resign. Two, two. I, the understand. Position, so. I understand. But... Was this a permanent appointment or was it tenure? It's permanent appointment. He says permanent appointment. Check the August, check the August uh, resolution. This but, person was granted tenure. But Commissioner, even if the person was granted tenure, if they resign, he still can resign from the position. But then, are we allowed to, even if the person resigns, are we allowed then to rescind the tenure? I don't think so. We're not rescinding a tenure here. We're setting an appointment. They're leaving the district. He says we send a permanent appointment granted to this individual. Okay, then, then why is this a case where we aren't, the person not resigning as opposed to res rescinding the permanent appointment? We, right? I mean, normally when somebody resigns, they come before the board. Did this person start working? The resolution mm -hmm. says. No. But this person never worked. I mean, it was granted an appointment, never started, but to resign. What you have here, Commissioner, is an issue where. The, the resignation comes in before, uh, um, before the person starts, but doesn't match our resolution process. We've talked about this. The, the resolution process is, is, is very long and cumbersome and doesn't match the calendars that we often use. So this person was hired, was approved by the board before they were supposed to start, never started. So you can't resign for something you never started to do. Bear with me one moment, please. Schools started September 1st. First. The, the resolution was on August 26th. Um, the person never came to work. Okay, uh, why are you looking for that, Commissioner Williams? Um, Commissioner um, Campos. I just have one quick follow-up question on the question that I asked about the careers program. And it's probably less, it has to do with human capital and more about the program consistency. So the person that left, now it's being, the position is being filled. This is for resolution 214, the careers program at, that's at Oasis. So this position is being filled and then I'm curious, what are the schools that it's going, I know it's gonna be expanded to another school because it's been hugely successful at 22. 
So we want to know what the other two schools are as well. If you, if you can get that to me, if you don't yes. have it, it's fine. The person who knows Gladys, she's outside talking to uh, Howard Eagle. And I, th and I think this woman was, this person was granted tenure in August. To answer Commissioner um, Williams', Williams um, question. Well, she was granted tenure in August. That's, the, okay. Here's where. Doesn't HCI use permanent appointment, right? The same vein as tenure sometimes? Well, this is a specific position related to what she was doing. That's why she was granted for an appointment. It's a particular position. But the bottom line is this person resigned. Right. And you cannot resend a tenure because the person, if the person did, if, 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 if the person did achieve tenure, in this case, you can't resend tenure because the person was granted, properly granted tenure in the district and then resigned the position before school started. Right. You cannot rescind tenure because this was done properly in this case. So how the only way to rescind tenure is a 3028 termination process. Well, what she is not getting is this appointment. Yes. Because she's, she, she sent in a resignation letter saying, I don't want to be a, I don't want the position in this appointment. Correct. So let me, let me explain because I think there are people who are listening to this, make sure we're clear about this. In, in Resolution 200, this was a clerical error from social studies to social worker. So this was correct the clerical error. The person is getting tenure in the proper certification area. In the case of 202, this is a person apparently who received tenure over the summer, uh, but the person resigned the position. So you can't resend tenure, but the person can resend their permanent appointment to a position. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Time out. Makes perfect sense. So which one did it? So for a minute here, I thought someone said that this person had not worked at all in the district. Is that? So which one is it? I mean, he didn't start the school year she didn't start, start the, school, the year. school year was she an employee yes what did she was she granted tenure in august yes commission the assumption about not working was my assumption and again i don't memorize the seven thousand employees that we have in the district so i was looking at this and, and making an assumption this person was never was never hired but even if this person received tenure in june july or august um, and then resigns uh, and then did not start working after getting the permanent appointment, which is what we call tenure in, in this area. You resend the permanent appointment. You cannot resend the tenure because the tenure was granted properly through state law in this case. Whereas 200 is a clerical error that is being corrected. The person is getting tenure, but in the proper certification area. You cannot give someone tenure in an area where they're not certified to work in. Okay, so, so on, let me make, make sure I'm clear. So 202 should is correct. The first is it correct? Is it, uh, is it a rescission or a resignation that we're doing here? Because normally when somebody leaves the district, you can do it either way. They resign. They resign, and we vote on that as a resignation, not a rescission of a permanent appointment. Should, should be in both areas. Could it be done either way? Resign, remove from yeah. appointment. Yeah. Okay. Is she still with the district in her previous no. capacity? Yes, previous. She resigned from the district. She resigned. She's gone. She's no so, longer here. She's no longer here. She moved. So there will also be then a resignation resolution either this month or next. In addition to the rescission of permanent employment, there's going to be at some point, if not here, then in a future resolution, a resolution for us to approve her the resignation. official resignation. Yes, because we did receive a resignation letter. So this could be changed for resignation, yes. correct? Okay. Okay. But it's going to be a post-dated resolution in that yes. instance as well. If, if in fact she's moved out of the area, it, it's not a job abandonment, abandonment if she's actually told us on leave. Right. We will use the effective date of the resignation letter. Yes. So let's change the resolution to resignation. Okay. Then that ends it. Thank you very much. So, so are you so are we so you're saying that 202 would be resignation? Sure, we can do that. I, I would like to amend resolution 202 to say both the rescission 
to include both rescission of permanent employment and, and the, acceptance of resignation. Yes. Okay. What's the effective date of the resignation? September 4th. Okay. Fine. All right. So, uh, so, so the correction in resolution 202 will be we will have res rescinding and resignation of the appointment. We'll have both. Assuming that the information presented is and, this inf and we know this information is accurate, September 4th? Um, then we'll use whatever is on the letter. Okay. That's what I would do. And so September 4th, we believe, is on the letter? Yes. Do you have it with you or you don't have it with you, the letter? Okay, so we'll get that. We'll correct it tomorrow. We'll get the, the actual letter. Now what are we doing with this resolution? We are going to take... Rescind in resignation. It, it will read... Re re with an effective date of, we're going to go with September 4th. We're, we're, we're hoping that that's oh, correct. What, that's what's what, in here. Why don't we do this? In case it's not September 4th, I don't want to come back a second time with this again. Right? So All right, then I'm, going to, then I'm going to take 202 off, and, and we'll get it corrected, and, and you can bring it back at a special meeting that we have. We have a special meeting, I believe, next we'll week or October 7th. First of all, October 7th. Just from a parliamentary procedure standpoint, um, do we have a motion? Do we have actually a motion and second? We have a motion, no second. I didn't hear a second. Who's, who's, Commissioner Powell, are you second? I didn't, but... Okay, but I said, will you? I didn't, I didn't say I said, I said, will you? I'm to see if, in fact, there already is a separate resolution to, under resignations for the same name, because there are two pages of res, uh, resignation. Well, I think the ACI folks would know if there's... If, 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 I don't have a resignation. There's not a resignation in there. Do I have a second for the table? Second. Second, all right. Table goes straight to a vote. All those in favor of the table for 202 so we can get it corrected and get the correct information, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. Thank you. We're back. I do have a question, though, is the fact that the permanent appointment has not been rescinded, does that make it difficult for the superintendent to then find somebody to fill that position? No. I'm not sure, but um, we'll, we'll, get the, we'll get that, we'll, they'll get that corrected and bring it back to us when it's corrected. So we're back on 197 through 225 with the exception of 202. Um, anything else on 197 through 225 with the exception of 202? I have uh, um, just a question. I did ask this question and you all responded. Um, there is one employee who, um, when he came into the district, an African-American male, that was just phenomenal. And uh, he's left the district to take a position in SOVIS. And I um, have to express my uh, disappointment about that because um, I remember when he galvanized the community um, when um, uh, we needed to um, math. yeah have have the math uh, scores have help with uh, math uh, for the exam and and um, he really just galvanized this community so I'm a little. Um, a little dis I'm dis well, I'm not a little, I'm a lot disappointed that we no longer have this, particularly this African-American male uh, in, uh, in our district. So I, I wanted to uh, place that on record. Uh, he was phenomenal with those young people. He was not too far from their age anyway and just related so very, very well. So I'm, I'm just somewhat um, disappointed that we could not keep, uh, keep him. However, I do wish him... Um, the best. I don't know, you know, exactly what happened. If this was an offer that he couldn't refuse, or what the case may be, uh, but um, I, I think the district is not going to be the kind of district it could be because it does not have him in the district. Just want to put that, make that a part of the record. Thank you. Anything else? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Williams, how do you vote on 197 through 225 with the exception of um, 202? Yes. Um, Commissioner Campos? Yes. Commissioner Powell? Yes. Commissioner Elliott? Um, no on 223 through 225. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Cruz? Yes, sir. I vote yes. Um, those are done. We have one resolution. Thank you, um, Ms. Warren and Ms. Brown. Um, and we'll get 202 back. We do have a, a meeting um, beginning of October, so we'll bring that back corrected. 226 is um, a resolution all on its own, School Wires, Inc., out of Pennsylvania for um, the communicate for communications um, website stuff. Um, may I have a motion for 226, please, to approve? So moved. 
Moved by Commissioner Powell. May I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Campos. Um, questions? Any, any questions around 226? Hearing none, all those in favor of 226, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Resolution 227 is something we were just talking about what Commissioner Elliott brought up earlier, school food service, Kazen food service planning and design. May I have a motion? You want so to say moved. something? Yes, I want to say something. It's moved. Oh, let, let me get it on the table. It's moved no, by no. Commissioner. 226, I'm sorry. 220, okay, I'll go back oh. to 226 in one second. But it's sure. let me, 227, it's been moved by Commissioner Elliott. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Cruz. All right, Mr. Superintendent, you're messing up our process. Uh, I have no 226, <laughs> Mr. Superintendent. Keep I'm, I'm very sorry because at times we do things and people don't always see the impact. 226 is the school wires incorporated. Uh, last year we had quite a bit of um, uh, positive press around the new website, uh, the renewed website, the, the access um, that provided to the community. And this was another, a savings of nearly $100,000. Um, so a small sum of $39,000 really maintains what has become a great gateway for our community. So I wanted to thank Tom Petronio for the work he's done on the website. And by the way, if you've not noticed, we have a Facebook account as well and a Twitter account. Please follow us. Oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> Cynthia, be oh, there. Sucky, sucky that. <laughs> so um, we're back on 227, which is, a, um, which is uh, to help with the assessment of development of a master plan and conceptual design and cost estimates for um, the, the um, food service department. Any, any questions around um, resolution 227? Comments? Um, did I see your hand go up, Commissioner? Yes, the only Williams? was 227. Now, in the central kitchen, I thought we had we had started construction or reconstruction for the central kitchen. Yes or no? Mr. Underwood. I could have answered that. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Being that Commissioner Elliott lives there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Williams, good evening. The work we did uh, this summer at the central kitchen was equipment based. We haven't done any structural, made any structural changes to the facility. This assessment is going to um, guide that, how far we can go with, um, uh, with respect to redeveloping the central kitchen. So what we did this past summer was all equipment based. Okay. All right. Thanks. Th thank you. Um, student rep, your advisory vote. Thank you. <laughs> all, all those in favor of um, 227, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions, the ayes have it. Thank you. We look forward to hearing about um, the progress uh, in the central kitchen. 228 through 231 are um, procurement resolutions. I believe that these did go through the Finance Committee. Um, I'll entertain a motion for resolutions 228 through 231. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Elliott. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner um, Powell. Any um, questions around these, these resolutions which have gone through finance? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Any, um, one, well, one opposed, Commissioner Williams? No, 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 which? 228 through 231. I'm sorry, yes. Yes to all. Yes to all, okay, thank you. 228 through 231 are approved. Um, resolutions 232 are two, and through 268 are um, educational facilities resolutions. Um, various architectures, architects are in there, as well as um, some environmental services, fence repair, other miscellaneous things that we use to Ooh. maintain our buildings. Moved by Commissioner Cruz. Second. There's second. Seconded by Commissioner Elliott. Um, questions around 232 or 268. Again, these have gone through the Finance Committee. Educational facilities resolutions. Yes. Um, Commissioner Williams. One comment. At 232, there seems to be. On 232, it just, it doesn't, there seems to be something that's missing. Um, I'm not sure whether it's that, well, when it starts out where <coughs> all the superintendent or his designee. Uh, being hereby is authorized to enter into an agreement with JPC, JCJ Architecture uh, to provide architectural and engineering services to develop, and it says, and education 
So I'm not sure whether there's something there that's. Should be A N N. A N. Ah, okay. Good catch. That is. That's it for those. Thanks. Okay. Yep, thank you. <coughs> Anything else around educational facilities? 232 through 268. All those in favor of 232 through 268, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, opposed Any obs to? Two thirty four, two thirty five, two thirty six, and two thirty seven. Say that again, Commissioner. Two thirty four, two thirty four, two thirty five, two thirty six, and two thirty seven. Okay, Madam Clerk, have you captured those? Yes. Thank you. Um, we'll now move on to Resolution two sixty nine. Something else that was mentioned earlier tonight, transportation. Resolution, um, I'll entertain a motion to um, approve resolution number 269. So moved. There is a second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Campos. Discussion briefly, um, I, I know that Commissioner Powell, you mentioned that this is for um, expanded transportation at the, at the, at the new Edison um, the Robert Brown High School of Construction and Design. Yes. Mr. Superintendent, anything you wanted to add on that? Sure. Just uh, as Commissioner Powell said, uh, those two schools have a different kind of a schedule. They have a longer school day. Uh, it is something we are experimenting with to make sure those kids are being brought up to proficiency rather quickly. So the principals there and the teachers created a much longer um, school schedule that required this to happen. Mr. President, if I yes, could just... Um, Commissioner Powell. Just to um, shed light on the conversation that was had in the Finance Committee, the, the concern that I raised was um, we had put the principles in place for these new schools early enough to make some, um, to be able to make some of the decisions that would allow the operations area of the district to respond. Um, potentially respond in a more timely fashion than, than they were allowed to because they were brought into the conversation terribly late. Given that we had the leadership in place, my concern, and I, I only articulate it because I'll say in public what I said in private or, or semi-private in, in the context of our committee. What we need to do a better job of wargaming our major strategic changes. If we're putting, we're putting the leaders in place, we're giving them time to get their feet under them, they then need to get with the people who can affect the changes they want on a timeline that is, is not, does not create an emergency, um, such as the changes that were required to the RTS contract in order to make that happen. They weren't invited to the, the, the transportation people, the operations people were not invited to the education table until very late. Um, it's a mistake that we should know better than to keep making. Um, educators can't do it in a vacuum. Operations people need to know what the um, educational needs are to be able to make those things happen. And Commissioner, I, I agree completely. Um, ex just to, to, to justify again what is happening, f to give you an example, our school improvement grant, all the massive changes was approved today, uh, a month into the school year. Uh, and it took really a call to um, my friend and colleague in, in Washington to push on SED to move on, to move the ball for us. Um, so we were working with a timeline um, that really didn't, was tight and, and our processes were not as great because we were behind the eight ball throughout the process. Again, all of it was, it was, was, it was not our fault. Um, going back to USDOE announcing this back in February or January, uh, SED not approving our plan until today. Um, so it is something I think we strive to do and Mary can talk to that, I guess, more. Go ahead. I just wanted to add that while it's, um, 
correct that we had the principals in, in place early on. We did not have the staff entirely in place. So we've been hiring all along um, throughout the spring and even into the summer. So this was also a staffing issue to be able, they voted to extend their day. It's beyond what was required of them. Um, and as the superintendent shared, part of the SIG can fund and seeks to fund extended day, but it was really something we also needed staff buy-in for as well, in addition to the principal buy-in. A contractual. Right, per contract. So. Thank you. I, um, I accept the explanation. I would, I, I guess what I want to know is, it was envisioned that there would be a longer day from the beginning. And did, did those who had to help make it happen with buses and transportation, did they know that that was the vision and simply couldn't act on it until, you know, until somebody hits the, 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 go, the go button? Or were they completely in the dark until after the vote? That, I guess that's the kind of uh, timeline I want to hear about because that tells me whether the, the whole scenario was war-gamed and the people who needed to be in the know were in the know. You know, um, I'm not sure, I guess, the, 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 the exact answer, but the one thing, Commissioner, I can tell you is that we strive to include everybody. Um, in, in Mary's planning, in fact, for next year, she been, we're already looking at enrollment um, for next year to see what we can and cannot do in terms of school redesign for, for next fall. So in this particular case, um, while I'm sure the operations folks were, were part of the conversation, I'm not sure if we knew what the impact would be in terms of funding for, for the buses early on, early enough um, to really have this flow very, very well. Uh, this was unusual um, uh, in trying to we, we constitute 50% of the high schools in the district, uh, given the timeline we're given by the feds and by, by the state, uh, and of course, I would talk about the hiring process, Mayor, if you want to add. I, I'll just say, like I said, that this um, did happen throughout the year and the, the planning was taking place. Um, per SIG, you can use the dollars to fund this. So while transportation had already agreed upon the RTS contract well in advance in their planning, uh, it. It, it's a surprise, but it's it's a good surprise for us in that we're able to use these funds that are coming to us to help extend the day for students, which we're really excited about, to have that extended learning time, which is a requirement of the grant. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anything else on Resolution 269? Hearing none, um, student rep, do you have an advisory vote? I agree. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, all those in favor of Resolution 269, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you. I'm sure the students appreciate the fact that they can have transportation home. 270 through 289 are um, the proper recategory, or as we like to call it, other. Um, no, it's not. I didn't have well, it has a whole bunch of have a, No. Yeah, 270 through 289. Yeah. So I will entertain a motion for 270 through 289. Um, could, could we revise that so that we can give special attention to the policies? That is to say, could we take um, to, 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 uh, yeah, through to 279? I'm sorry. Can we take 270 through 279 as a, and then take two, 80 and 281 as a set. Pulling the policies of it. Okay, if there are no objections, I will take 270 through 279, and then 280 through 281, and then 282 through 289. Um, well, 280 and 281 are, are two policies that we are um, adopting tonight. Um, and I would just point out that 278 relates to the um, Rochester Joint School Construction Board. Um, so, no objections these, out. These are somewhat, you know, out of order. I guess we, you know, it's no problem. But yeah, they're all. When you look at some of these are gifts. Uh, the last one is a uh, uh, resolution for universal pre-K, and right. prior to that is the, the gifts. Then it's the. Um, yeah, they're, they're not in any particular. Yeah, they're not LEA representative. So. Yeah. 
So I'll, t I'll take um, two set. I'll entertain a motion for resolutions 270 <coughs> through um, 279. And, and, and also resolution 273 is pulled. So 270 through 279 moved by Commissioner Powell. Is there a second? Second, Seconded by Commissioner Campos. Um, Questions on 279, oh, Commissioner Elliott? No, no, no. I, I was thinking we had the vote, and I need to abstain on 274. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, if you just capture that for the record, that um, when it will come to the vote, Commissioner Elliott will be abstaining on 274. Um, it's been moved and properly seconded on 270 through 279. Any other questions or comments? Um, yes. Commissioner Williams? 271, um, Ascendant Strategy Management Group. And this is for 69,000. Yeah. Now, basically, when I go back through, oh, first comment is, it seems to be spending a lot of money in the strategy group. And, and it seems as if that's all we do, is spend money. I mean, we hire consultants. And for this particular contract, you know, I went back and looked at the, the reporter contracts were under 25000 We just gave them 24000 in May or June. And now this is another 69000 So it's, you know, um, it's getting plus when I look at some of the other contracts to consulting firms. I mean, we're... We're getting up there quite a bit. Um, so the question is, what are we getting for our almost $93,000 in within a four or five month period from these guys? I'll that excludes some of the other, you know, consulting contracts. Twenty, you know, <coughs> all of which have been under twenty-four thousand. Which the intent to me seems to be to, to escape board scrutiny, but. Commissioner, I can tell you that that is, um, that is not, not a fact. Uh, it is something that Chuck Johnson and I watch very, very carefully um, to make sure that no one plays games around giving us contracts under 25000 to avoid board scrutiny. Um, we work very hard um, um, for that to, that to happen. We push back on people on a regular basis for that. Um, a lot of the contracts that we approve uh, for, for consultants, a lot of them are funded by, by, by grants, required by grants, or work that we actually do. So to pull that all into one big category does not do the kinds of justice that we're talking about. Uh, in this particular category, this was work we entered with the Senate to make sure that we could work with those folks. Uh, these are the people who invented the scorecard, uh, who invented the work that we do. Um, the, the group uh, actually has, um, this is again, um, uh, started from the Harvard School of Business um, and the two professors who created this organization was done specifically for not-for-profits and for education. They're the ones who've worked with Atlanta Public Schools. Uh, I believe they also worked with Hillside Children's Center. Um, they are a phenomenal group, um, really have been working us through the process of creating a map and now operationalize a lot of what we do in the district. Um, so I can let Jim, if you want to add any more um, to that. Uh, but this is the, um, honestly, the national premier group that actually does this work for, for school districts and for not-for-profits. The only thing I would add, Superintendent, is that if you put it, the expense into context, $70,000 tonight, I looked at it, in terms of the overall district budget, that's one one-hundredth of one percent. And if you look at the impact, I think you've been making the case all night long as to why we need this. This work impacts the ability to measure things, to look at um, how can you measure your progress? How do you know you're uh, moving things forward? One of the things I remember you, uh, Commissioner, asked last year was um, about the effectiveness of programs. This uh, strategy map allows uh, you to look at the effectiveness of programs and measure that to see if you're making progress. Um, so you, you really have to look at the big picture. It's, you know, a big organization, $700 million, 6,500 people. Um, to align all of those folks around what's really important uh, is important work. And um, in that context, I think, you know, this has really been valuable work. As the superintendent said, uh, we've tested Ascendant. And if you look at, the superintendent is having us read a book uh, by Rachel Curtis, 
strategy in action. The foreword is written by uh, Dr. Hall, and I won't read it to you, but she specifically mentions the balanced scorecard as a key to their success. And if you look at Atlanta, uh, about 10 years ago, six years ago, uh, their metrics were very similar to ours in terms of performance. If you look at it today, it's dramatically improved. And not my words, but Dr. Hall talks about the impact of the balanced scorecard on that effort. And as the superintendent said, Atlanta uh, went through a rigorous process, hired the group that we've, we've hired, and um, in fact, I talked to the uh, strategy director down there, and she said, you know, you could try others we have, don't bother, this is the best group. So I think, you know, the, the things that I would be looking for in terms of deliverables would be higher performance throughout the organization. And I would look for the same kind of track and trend that Atlanta had. Well, fine. But when I go back and when I start racking up all of the contracts and all of the dollars for your office, the Office of Strategy Planning or Strategic Leadership, you know, what I see is we've hired a consultant to develop the plan, design and develop the plan. We hired a consultant to coach the plan, to implement the plan, and to monitor the plan. The, the, hiring, really the hiring and the development of the plan was not. That, that was my office commission. What? Well, well, where it is, I mean, we've hired someone to develop a strategy, well, design a strategy, develop a strategy, implement the strategy, monitor the strategy, uh, as well as develop the scorecard. My question is, first, my co first comment is, that's your job. Yeah, I mean, why, you know, when I look at the Office of Strategic Leadership, you know, my expectation was that your job was not to, we didn't hire you, or I wouldn't have hired you, to hire consultants. I mean, all of these pieces are the things, in my estimation, are the expectation is the things that you should be doing, right. not hiring consultants. I mean, I, you know, the question becomes, if we hire the consultants, I mean, why do we need you? Well, again, wait, 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 the work is urgent. I mean, we're not talking about insignificant things. President uh, um, Evans, if I, if I may, if I may, um, in Commissioner Williams, just to, I guess, reiterate again, um, I, I don't want to give people the perception that we we're racking up contracts and contracts for consultants to do this work. This strategic plan and, and the cost so far, even with Ascendant, to, to develop what we've developed, and to be as far as we are, uh, where we're getting national recognition for this work has cost us so far about $54,000. The, the, the development of the plan was, was co-sponsored and, and co-funded by the Broad Foundation in doing this. We paid a portion, they paid, they paid a big portion of this. In fact, what we developed has become a model for mid-sized districts across America. Um, so we're talking about so far, without this resolution, um, it's only about 54, if, if that much, honestly, maybe be, be less than that, uh, maybe $40,000, $45,000 in what we've done, and, 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 and an organization, again, that spends $700 million to get things done. Um, it's a very, very, very tiny amount of money when you look at the kinds of strategy we've got to put in place to get this thing done. Um, so what we funded, this was not a way of getting around the board. Uh, we tested, we wanted to make sure that we could work with them, we wanted to make sure this would make sense for us as a district. We didn't want to enter into a year-long $100,000 contract with an organization we had never worked with before. So this was a test for us, and the work they've done so far has been phenomenal, um, to the point where people, again, are emailing, heralding, asking questions, how do we look at this, how do we, in fact, I'll give you an example, John Skin and I are heading to, to Rhode Island to meet with the Rhode Island Association of Superintendents uh, to talk about what we've done um, here in Rochester, the entire state of Rhode Island, uh, because again, they're very interested in, 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 in our map and the work that we actually have been doing. President Evans. Um, Commissioner Elliott. Uh, I, um, I, uh, I, I, I have serious concerns about the Office of, of um, Strategic Leadership 
I, I, you know, I just put that on the table. Um, and I, when, when, this, when, this, when this office was created, um, one, of the, one of my comments was is that we have a deputy superintendent. We have four, three or four chiefs. Why could they not put this strategic plan um, together? In my mind, this, and, and I agree with Commissioner Williams, that this really is a waste of money. I mean, we have PhDs around here who have um, uh, had their PhD work paid for by this district. And you mean to tell me we don't have this kind of skill set within our organization? Then we're paying somebody too much money, and somebody shouldn't be here. Now, let me also talk about the Atlanta school system. 85% of the people, the staff in that district are people of color who look like the students in that district. That is not the case in this district where you have 85% of the staff who are white and 85% of the I'm students. I'm sorry, Mr. President, point of order. I, I, 85% I of the students. I'm failing to see what the relevance Whether you fail to see it or not, I'm going to continue. To do, excuse me, I'm sorry. I've got a point of order, Mr. President. So, I, I, whether you see point it or of not, order. the question is. I have a point of order. So, so, I have a point so, of order. So, the fact is, is that 85% look like order. us and not like the ones in the district. So that's my point. Commissioner Cruz, your point of order. All right, yeah. I, I'm, again, my point of order is that I'm failing to see what the relevance of this Whether you see it or not, Commissioner Cruz. Do with this particular resolution. Whether you see it or not. Excuse me, I have the floor. No, but, Commissioner but it Elliott. does. I'm Commissioner telling you Elliott. that it does. Okay. Commissioner Elliott, right. I have the Hold floor. Hold on one second. Point of order. Floor, point of order overrules. Uh, You're not listening to you. Order. Please listen to me. No, well, I, I have the floor at this point. Yeah. And I have a point of order, and I'm making my point of order. Commissioner Cruz, you're looking for relevance. I'm looking for relevance in this current conversation having to because do with this particular the, you resolution. Went to, you went out. Uh, Commissioner Cruz. No, but it didn't, make any, it didn't make any sense when you it first started. You were out of the room, okay. Commissioner Cruz. All right. Um, the fact uh, is, he did talk about Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was making the statement. And you were out of the room. Well, you tell me what's what. Commissioner what's Cruz, you were out of the room. With, okay. What's it got he to, made all right. a statement. I'm sorry. And I was referring to his statement. Okay. I'm sorry. You show me the relevance that has to do with this Commissioner particular Cruz, resolution. I told you right. he was out of the room. It he was, had made a statement. I was commenting to okay. his it statement. It was irrelevant when I walked irrelevant. out of the room. All right. Oh. Commissioner. All right. All right. That's wrong. All right. We're back Because you were out of the room. All right. And you didn't hear it. It was irrelevant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring us back to resolutions 270 through 279. Um, any further questions on resolution 270 through 279? Um, 270 is the last resolution we were, we were discussing, and that related to, um, I'm sorry, 271 was the last one we were, that related to ascendant strategy. Anything on 270, anything else on 270 through 279? 278. I have a 278, question. 278, Commissioner um, Williams. This is, this is resolution relating to um, FMP and Heart of Seacrest LLP. Right. On this one, and again, you know, sort of the same thing. In this, in this particular case, there is a request for 60000 related to the FMP. Prior to that, according to this resolution, the board also picked up another 22000 22, And in going back and looking at the the report on contracts for less than 25000 there was another $22,000. So over a period of a year or so, you, you spent about $100,000 in legal fees. And the question becomes, one, what did they do for $100,000? The second thing is, you know, who's monitoring these, the costs that are, that are being incurred or that, that we have to pay for on behalf of the FMP. I mean, who, you know, we put out the money. We, in this case, are reimbursing or paying for the legal fees. Who's monitoring it and who's, who's keeping a handle on in terms of what's going on? There was one resolution for 22.5. So um, you're mistaken with the aggregate. We're about $72,000, uh, including this resolution, uh, Commissioner Williams. As a matter of fact, of the first 22-5, uh, I think we spent 19000 and change of that. Uh, the reason that this is before you is that the bills that are accumulated obviously exceed that 22-5. Uh, so we did not pay up to that 22-5. The bills that we got before we got this set of bills 
exceeded the 25, so we need to come back um, uh, to the board uh, for approval to do that. Who's watching it? I am. Uh, the funds that are uh, allocated and have been allocated uh, to pay the administrative uh, costs for the Washington Joint Schools Construction Board sit in my, in my budget, so I oversee that. Uh, the legal bills um, get vetted by the RGSCB board. Uh, they go to Ken Bell. He and I then communicate that he approves the bills. Chuck Johnson, and, uh, I utilize him to look over them because he's an attorney, and then uh, we then say, well, uh, the, 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 the bills are valid. What uh, has Heart of Secrets done to, um, uh, to earn those funds? Uh, we have pretty detailed uh, reports on what they have done. Uh, a huge part of it is help with the organization of the Washington Joint Schools Construction Board was one thing. Uh, secondly, the um, uh, issuing the RFP and, and choosing the program manager um, uh, Gilbane Seven, um, who you, you, you saw uh, Monday night, uh, has done substantial work to get us to the point where we are with the Washington Joint Schools Construction um, Board. So an enormous amount of time has been spent uh, by Heart of Secrets to get us to this point. Now we're moving with the project. Okay, and in addition to Heart of Secrets, there was another legal bill that we incurred and paid for to let uh, hear a speech also on the same project. Uh, I'd have to defer. I'm not aware of that one, Commissioner. But the the bills, all the bills I'm talking about, it's 72,000 are uh, for Heart of Secrets. Okay. Now going forward, once once the the FMP board becomes a you know, viable and well, uh, an institution is up and running, they only they have their the program manager, the director, and everything else. What happens from that point? Uh, great question. Uh, we've been talking about that um, quite a bit. The one, the, the second reason that this uh, resolution is here is that the um, the FMP or the Russia Joint Schools Construction Board is in the process of essentially becoming an entity that so that they can pay their own bills. The cooperative agreement that was signed uh, by the mayor, uh, this board of ed, allows the district to advance funds to the Washington Joint Schools Construction Board to pay their administrative fees. Uh, we Is there a cap on that? Is there a cap on that advance? They, we have an estimated budget uh, for this fiscal year from the Washington Joint Schools Con Construction Board, which is about $350,000, which takes us through this fiscal year. What the agreement, the cooperative agreement, also calls for is a, a, a monthly vetting of those bills. In other words, we would advance uh, and then uh, monthly there to um, give us a report on what those funds were spent on so that we could report it to this board as well. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. 270 through 279, anything else on 270 to 279? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, in reference to 277, uh, what is the uh, status of that program, and, and has that program uh, been successful? Somebody may have given me some information about this last year, but uh, it, please remind me. And yes, it's been successful, Commissioner. We can give you data if you'd like and the information um, from the AVID for. Um, um, uh, what, what, was, what were the measurements on this program, and, and what were the results? We have seventh and ninth grade kids who are part of this program. It's really a college development program for students. Um, we track their ELA math um, scores. We don't yet have graduation rate because the program only started about two years ago. Um, those kids are still in the, um, in the lower grades in the high school. Um, so when you look at these students' performance, um, they tend to outperform the rest of the groups or other groups of kids in, in the school. Um, you do know AVID is a program, advancement, it stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. It's a national program, um, by the way, which is written in, um, which is coded in law in California, required by the governor to be funded in every school district in California. Um, we tried this in New York, we didn't get very far with our governor here in New York. Oh, we have, I didn't know you were here, How many um, students participate in this program? Currently there are 1,300 students in 18 school sites. I think there's we'll 1,300 and... Excuse me? We'll have our first group graduating this year. 
Okay. So these, these students are prepared and can sex, successfully enter into um, high school or you said this was a seventh grade, seventh through nine grade program? Seven through 12. Okay, so that, pro, so that students from this program, let me just ask it a different way. Those who are, you say you're getting a graduating class now. So we can expect that those students who enter into post-secondary education for example, are going to be ready to engage in post-secondary education. They will be um, equipped with the skills. No remedial work will have to be done exactly. on that level. Exactly. Right. Okay. So now, so then, when the other grades, as they transition, you know, transition to, into, you know, this the school year, we should be able to see um, academic successful uh, academic performance as a result of this program. Is, is that correct? Of what I'm how I'm interpreting this. Okay, so um, is it information available yes. to it, determine? In, can we get the information about the success of this program for each of the grade levels? For each of the grade levels? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And Commissioner, if you know the program is designed to uh, create a college going culture mm -hmm. with kids who are first generation college goers. So it has a tutoring component, it has um, um, a skill building component, meaning things like um, how to take notes, Cornell note taking. Um, it, it's a culture developed with a group of students in a particular, in the middle of high school as they go up in, into the ranks. Avid now has been pushed down to as far as even the fourth grade in some places in, in, in the country. Um, but it really looks at kids who are in the academic middle, kids mm -hmm. who are not at the top of their class or bottom of the class, kids very often get lost in, in the shuffle in schools to, 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 to support them and, and get them in, to be successful in post-secondary institutions. I look forward to that information. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Commissioner uh, Powell. Um, uh, this comes as close as any conversation tonight to some of the, the joys and frustrations I face as a parent in this district. My daughter, Abigail, was just placed in uh, the whole series of AVID um, honors programs. She was placed there primarily because the other class level, the other coursework was, let me say it this way, it wasn't the coursework and it wasn't the teacher, it's that her peer group was not interested in achievement huge frustration for me because on the one hand I'd like my daughter to be a, an academic leader and show lead by example and show other children what success can look like she refused to be made fun of for being the only kid in class who knew the answer and so the only recourse we really had was to move her into a class where the culture of achievement already existed the challenge the frustration all of those children left behind in the other class now have, well, they didn't have an example before because Abby wasn't about to model it, but they have no example of what success looks like. They're, we're not just talking about whether they're a college track, we're talking about whether they are of a mindset to graduate because right now they're of a mindset to show up and that's it. And I have very, I have real concerns about the future of the district, not because the district isn't trying its darndest, but because we don't have control over the culture that the children come to school with and that they form. And 23 kids in a classroom, in a high school classroom, the one teacher, doesn't matter how motivated that teacher is, at that point, peer pressure takes over and the kids are determining the culture, not the teacher. The teacher can insist on what learning he expects, he or she expects, um, whether you know, the children get a passing or failing grade before ch uh, reaching that expectation, but the children and their peer culture dictate whether that class is gonna be successful, and I'm terrified that these children have set such a low expectation. Everybody's heard the, the parable of the barrel of crabs. When one crab actually finds its way to the top and ready to, to exit the barrel, the rest of the crabs pull them back down in. I'm afraid that that is the culture in our classrooms today, outside of the AVID program. 
Uh, President Mr. Evans. Yeah, Mr. Superintendent and Commissioner Elliott. Um, you certainly paint a, a, a bleak picture, Commissioner. Um, I'm but, scared. I'm but I, I, can, I can tell you as a former principal, and we have some right here in, in the audience who have created um, much better environment than I was able to even as a principal. I can tell you that culture often starts at, at the top, um, and, and the principal sets the tone very often. I'm not sure which school we're talking about. I'm not going to pass judgment on particular schools. And in some schools, we do have principals who are working very hard to change culture, and we know it often it's an uphill battle. But the leader sets the tone, the teachers set the tone. Um, I have to believe that children will always rise to the expectations of the adults. Um, and, and if a culture is set that we expect to do this, if success is celebrated, yes, we do know, um, and I hate to say it's the Bart Simpson um, um, phenomenon. Um, and, and, and the fact is, though, What's if... Bart Simpson phenomenon? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the, uh, the expectation of, of low achievement, exactly. Um, his, his slogan is underachiever achiever and proud of it. And proud of it. Um, and, and if you have a school culture, you know, I'll use, um, I can use a number of them, Wilson Foundation looking at Deja Sid and looking at me. Um, she, set, she set an expectation in that school that we're going to celebrate success. We're going to celebrate kids who do well. We're not going to tolerate mediocrity. It doesn't happen overnight, um, Commissioner. It takes years to actually build. And, and one of the reasons we're looking to create new schools is that it's much easier to, to put in place in a new school than to change the culture of an existing school. Um, but I would love to talk offline about that particular school because that kind of culture and expectation is done from the top. And even as you look at our district, we've been working very hard to change the, the definition. Um, we have a city that is uh, overly focused on high school graduation rates, and we tell people that number is meaningless when you have kids who are entering colleges and are failing. Uh, the, the goal is f to take a look at what happens two years after high school. And by the way, if you did not know, it's been in one of my letters, we actually now have data and they begin to collect data, college success data for our kids. We have now, I believe, the 02 and 03 cohort. Uh, we know two years after high school how, where, where they are and how well they're doing. I can give you the data by school and district-wide. Uh, we're working with a group called the National Student Data Clearinghouse. You didn't get a resolution because the New York State Education Department paid for it. Um, but giving us access to looking at what happens beyond, I, I don't disagree at all, uh, but it is what we strive for to create the kinds of cultures and, exp and have the adults have expectations that kids will, will do well. I mean, to give you something as simple as, uh, again, not to pick on 58, but the principal told me today, every kid got a blue ribbon, and, and they were so proud. The first and second graders were so proud of that blue ribbon, uh, and, and, and they were holding on to it. Not always sure what it means, but they knew it was special. Um, so if you, if you make a lot of kids to feel that, and it's easier, yes, in the elementaries, the challenge is to keep that as they go up to the middle school and in the high schools. Um, but you're right, the, the primary goal is to make sure we have a culture and expectation that, that success is celebrated, that bright kids are celebrated, and create a heterogeneous schools and classes where struggling kids can look at successful kids and not create homogeneous schools where the, that negative uh, issue feeds on itself. I want to elaborate and say that the, the AVID program, I, I mean, I, I'm pinning my hopes on it. Um, and while I was at the open house, I saw uh, some of the students talking with their teacher, the parents there, in, of teachers of AVID um, honors program coursework. And what, just one isolated example, the, the daughter said, yes, I sit there <clears throat> near the back of the class, and the mother gave her daughter the hairy eyeball. You're in the back of the class. You're not sitting up front making sure you're taking good notes. I mean, that's the culture where that's supported by the parents. Um, and and I, was, I was actually glowing at that point. Yes, these are the parents we want. They're showing up for open house. They're supporting their kids. And they're underwriting the culture of success. President Evans, let me just also comment on Commissioner Powell's um, remarks. Um, I don't believe, and I'm not doubting you, um, but I really don't believe that any kid does not want to learn. 
I think that that's a mask in many um, regards because I think that in uh, previous grades uh, they've been um, they they have um, our system has um, failed them, um, and I think that is a um, a defense mechanism. Now, I've been on this board. This is my fifth year. And you've always heard me talk about you have to have the right people, you have to have the right infrastructure, because this work is not easy. And so if you only do it by considering that a, a, to be a teacher or a principal, they have to be certified. You know, I've always questioned that. It's not only certified that determines quali being qualified, but you have to have some other pieces when you're working in an urban environment. And until we really l begin to uh, discuss this whole issue from not only point, well, because you know, a person has a um, certification, that they should work in the district. If you have a person who lives out in Hilton, for example, never been exposed to members in an urban environment, they cannot, you cannot teach the same way if you have not been exposed in an urban environment. It's always been my, um, my uh, take or my position that if you're gonna work in this district, you need to have about five years of urban experience, working somewhere in the urban community so that we are successful in educating our kids. So I hear that that may have been what they said, but I also believe with all my heart that that is not what they really mean, that they want to learn but they are afraid they probably are not up to the level of which that they can succeed in that classroom and that's where the real work has got to be. We have to have, make sure that their um, um, personnel, teachers, principals, and everybody who can support the fact that when we hear those kinds of comments, how do we help, um, how do we make redress um, to that? And I'll just bring up an example uh, of my nephew, and I already talked to the superintendent about it. I was having a conversation with my niece and nephew Saturday, and he's in the sixth grade, and he tells me when he was taking a spelling test that he was given the word hour, and he said it was easy. He's 11 years old, and on a spelling test, he's having to spell the word O-U-R. That's a crime, in my opinion. Low expectations. So we've got to root out all of that. So if that's, what if, if that's what my nephew is being taught right now in sixth grade, he's not going to be prepared to, in, in, when he get into secondary, uh, in, into the upper schools, to be able to engage successfully because he wasn't prepared before. So we've got a lot of issues to deal with. It's just not that, uh, Commissioner Powell. It's a whole lot of other issues that go along with that that, may have had, but that your daughter may not have... Um, um, that, that may be the only thing that she heard, but don't understand the, rest, the background to that. So we've got, a, as again, uh, Commissioner uh, um, Superintendent Bazard, as you said, we got a lot of work. And I'm glad that people are recognizing it. 279, can you so, vote on that, please? Um, Commissioner Williams, how do, you, how do you vote on 270 through 279? Yes to all except no on 271. On 272, I abstain. 274, no. Everything else is yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Campos? Yes. Commissioner Powell? Yes. Commissioner Elliott? Uh, Elliott? <laughs> Definitely no on 271. Uh, and I abstain on 274. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Okay, I vote yes. The ayes have it. Um, we will now move to Resolution 280 through 281. These are policy um, amendments. Um, I entertain a motion to approve uh, 280 through two, and 281. 280 is policy 6630. 281 is policy 6700. So moved. Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Campos. Any discussion? Commissioner Cruz, anything you want to add on 280 or 281? Uh, no, no, not really. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. They're just, uh, you know, the technical mm -hmm. fixes to some of the current language. <laughs> to, um, what? 
question or comment. When Ms. Flanagan passed out the, the draft of, the resolution, of this resolution, she also gave us some sample, resolu or sample policies from Brighton, Boces, and I think Buffalo. And one of the things that you look at for each of those three districts, they all had pretty much the same set of requirements. Uh, when I look at ours, for whatever reason, you know, for an institution like ours, we spend $700 million, and the money is spent over a 12-month period, for whatever reason, we decided to exempt two months out of 12 in terms of the board getting financial reports. Uh, also, and the, and the last thing, comment is that one of the things that each of these districts, and I look at all the other sort of districts throughout the, the state, they all require monthly budget status reports. And, and again, for whatever reason, we decided to delete those from, from our monthly reporting, which, and again, for a $700 million organization, doesn't make a lot of sense. But Point of correction, we're not deleting anything. It's never been there. Can we make a motion to add that language to this policy tonight? Commissioner Cruz? You're asking me if we could amend it to do that? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. No, I won't. I won't put forth the amendment, no. Okay. Well, we can put forth the amendment, and um, if they voted down, they voted down. So moved. Yep. yep. What's the, uh, what's the, hold on. The, what you, that we receive what, monthly what, report. Of, what, are, what are you, uh, what's, what's the, what are, what's the, uh, the amendment, the amendment is that six, one, we receive six, monthly six, six, budget status report and that we receive financial reports throughout the year. Uh, that we, where it says uh, reports to be, in, to be provided include budget, monthly budget status reports and for the monthly cash flow and the monthly available funds report, we would receive those year round. It would not be an, an exemption for two months. I second that. There's a, there's a second to the amendment. Um, now there'll be discussion on the amendment. The only thing I would say is that I, I wish you would have brought this up three months ago. We've had we've been talking about this policy for three months. Well, but uh, Mr. President, we've also been talking over the years about. Well, let me just say on the Finance Committee, I, I uh, most certainly have brought up the fact that um, we, don't, we were not getting financial reports on a monthly basis. And I had some strong concerns about that, particularly because of uh, my role, uh, our role, as uh, oversight of the finances of this district. Uh, I'm in the dark in those two months about the status, the financial status of our organization. Um, and so, um, although I'm not on the policy committee, um, I was not able to participate in those discussions. So um, I'd, I'd like to um, have that discussion here. Um, and it's, in my mind, is it really is no discussion, but that's just my take. Other people can just have a discussion if they so choose to. But I just think it provides us with greater oversight of the district's finances. And so that's why I'm interested in it, having to be included in um, this policy. I uh, commend the work that the policy committee has done through Commissioner Cruz, um, but I also think that this particular policy can be enhanced and that um, we ensure that we're providing the kind of scrutiny that we need to if we include this language in the policy. Thank you. They've already made the, the motion to amend was made by um, Commissioner Williams. Second. It was seconded by Commissioner Elliott, and the discussion on the floor right now is on the amendment to the motion, uh, the amendment to um, the, resolution. the resolution that's currently on the floor. 
Um, can you read back the the uh, the uh, the amendment? What's what's the amendment that we're discussing again? The amendment would be to 6630. Res policy resolution 6630 mm -hmm. to include monthly budget status reports. Mm -hmm. And to make two changes that we receive monthly cash flow reports and monthly available funds reports throughout the year. Okay, monthly budget reports and monthly cash flow and monthly status reports throughout the entire year. Okay. Any other discussion on the um, proposed amendment? Call it question. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Aye. No. All those abstaining? Um, let me let me uh, call for the call for a roll call. Roll call vote. All, um, Commissioner um, Williams. Yes. No. Commissioner Crew. Uh, no. Commissioner Campos. No. Commissioner Powell. No. Commissioner Elliott. Yes. Commissioner Cruz. No. I vote no. Commissioner uh, Student Rep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the amendment fails. Now we're back to the. Um, original motion which is 6630 um, financial reports and resolutions um, resolution number 280 any any further discussion around resolution 280 call it all those in favor of resolution number 280 please on order I think they both resolutions were moved and seconded yeah, yeah, they are together, 280 and 281, so yes. We should vote on so resolution 280 and 281. Um, <coughs> anything else on resolutions 280 or 281? Roll call vote, Mr. President, please. Roll call vote on 280 and 281. Um, Commissioner Williams? Uh, 280, no. 281, yes. yes. Com Commissioner Campos? Yes. Commissioner Powell? Yes. Commissioner Elliott? No on 280. Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Student rep? Yes. I vote yes. Um, we'll now move to resolutions 282 through 289. I'll, have a, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 282 through 289. There's a second. Second. Been moved, it's been properly moved and seconded. Questions on 282 through 289? Hearing none, all those in favor of 282 through 289, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Commissioner Powell, you can announce the gifts. We have four. three, I think. I see four. Four. Uh, Gift from Richard Rosenblum, a donation of $1,500 to uh, purchase uh, classroom library readers for at James Monroe High School. Um, thank you very much. There's a resolution, um, a gift from Catherine Alling, toys and games valued at $550 to the Montessori School. Um, a gift from NH Gallery and um, Nan Miller Gallery, donation of a little over $2,000 to be used at the, uh, for the Carl Peters mural restoration at uh, Wilson Magnet. That would have to be the second mural that's been in storage, and that's fantastic. I can't wait to see it. Um, and Finally, unless I'm missing a resolution, the Verizon Foundation is donating uh, $1,250 for the purchase of equipment and supplies for the um, East High School track team. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the gift. Um, that concludes our portion of resolutions. Um, we're not, we have no unfinished business from 
Previous meeting. Uh, pre President Evans, just point of personal privilege. Point of personal privilege, um, Commissioner Evans. Yeah, Superintendent Brazard, I just noticed that we don't have our, have the uh, uh, district council with us, and I just wanted to extend well wishes to our district council, uh, Chuck Johnson. I know he's had some surgery done, so we wanted, I just want to wish him well and uh, speedy recovery, and certainly he is missed today. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Wish Chuck well. Um, new business, um, discussion. discussion items, um, budget policy revision 6110, budget adoption policy 6130, 6000 and 6240 are, um, dis are I'm sorry, 6000 is information item, 6240 is an investment policy revision, Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, again, those are uh, investment policy is a is a revision is a technical revision to the to the current language because it uh, it the assumption is that we are a, a, a um, district that has control over its its uh, budget to the point where we can control our investments and also take in taxes and set tax rates and all those. As we know, we're not we are completely dependent upon the city of Rochester. So that policy is making a technical. A change in that language to reflect that uh, that that current reality. Can you talking to the superintendent, Mr. President? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I was just talking about the the, the, the amendment. Sorry, sorry, Commissioner. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I just no respect for Commissioner Cruz. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Um, I was just getting some clarification there. I apologize, Commissioner. It's my fault. Just getting some clarification. I know it. Clarification. <laughs> it's a big man that takes on fault like that. To That's go. right. And anything <laughs> else under, um, anyone have any other things they want to add to that? It, it, as Commissioner um, stated, these are technical in nature. Um, nothing earth shattering there other than um, making sure that everything aligns there. And this is a discussion item. I right. do anticipate us picking it up next, is it next meeting? Yes. Next meeting. And I would just ask that folks get their, if, if there's comments around these policies, please get them to the full board prior to the meeting so we can at least um, have, give some thought to them before we come to the meeting. And Mr. President, also, I think, you know, keep in mind that, keep in mind that our, committee, our committee meetings are open to everybody. Uh, we are going through a lot of information on finance. We're going through a lot of information on, in policy as well as the other committees. And so... It's a perfect opportunity to be able to have great informal dialogue with staff, getting down and diving deep into these uh, into these uh, policies, and that's when we do a lot of our work. And we spend a good, a solid hour to an hour and a half going through this process. And uh, unfortunately, you know, there's the, the board regular board meetings just don't, don't allow us to get that deep into it. But understand that your colleagues around the table are deep, are digging deep in this. They're asking the kinds of questions. And we would appreciate that if you have any concerns, you let us know ahead of time so we can bring those to the committee. Because the committee meetings are extremely, extremely important. And that's where the work gets done. And I, I urge you and challenge everybody here to be a part of those committees so they can get those kind of comments in early. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any, any, so we will, ha we will take that up next meeting. Our next um, scheduled meeting will be Monday, I'm sorry, uh, Thursday, October 28th at 6.30. And we um, anticipate um, having a regular scheduled meeting. Please stay tuned to, you, to, to oh, one, I do have one more point of information. I, I am in need of someone to represent the board, um, and if no one is free, um, we, we won't have a representative, to the New York State School Boards Association as a voting delegate. And um, I will send out the email. Sinead, do you know what date that is? It is on this Saturday. I believe it's October 23rd. That's the day we, had, we should That's, be there? Right. The conference is from October 21st to the 24th. The voting session, the open session is the 23rd. I think that's Saturday. That's Saturday. So we need someone to represent. I, I am not free um, that, that day. So we need Any someone board, to go. Any school board member? Any school board that? member that, that can Which attend? Probably that, you're not president I, of, of I, that? I, I, we're not talking about Big Five. We're talking about uh, NISBA. New York State School Board. I have been the voting delegate for a number of years, but I, and I'll be going down for the Big Five, but I cannot stay through the weekend. So I can't be the voting delegate. What happens if we're not there to vote? Uh, nothing really. We just, we just won't have our vote done, but we, but, but we pay good dues, so we want to make sure we have our... Um, I'm thinking about going down, but it okay. won't be until 
I, well, I, I what would you be there Saturday? Well, I, yeah, I plan to go down on, on Friday, but... So you can stay till Saturday? So I may go down on first thing Saturday, yeah. All right, I, I'm naming you as the voting dele delegate. Please vote our interest, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Okay. Ooh. 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 I should go there. No ascendance. Let me go. I'd like to see the metrics. I want to see the metrics on that. Yeah. Let me go. No. So, I promise. So, I remember you. Uh, okay. Don't so, 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 just a reminder, Commissioner, you do have to come back home. Yeah. <laughs> so, Commissioner Williams will be our voting delegate for um, the New York State School Board. It's very important. I, I'm the um, representative in, in D.C. for the NISBA, and it's important because this district is one of the biggest districts. So, NSBA. NSB, um, for NSBA. So, um, it's very important that we definitely have our representation. So, Commissioner Williams, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, and again, our next meeting is October 28th. Obviously, there is stuff before then, the reach out and all the other things that I mentioned. And if there's no other business to come before the body, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Sir. So moved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Church, say amen. 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 Hey, don't listen. <laughs>